Hello, hello, THL. We rock into the final part of our weekend here. Welcome to THL Sunday Showdown. I'm your host, Saku. we got uh, two wonderful casters tonight. We're going to start off with the dankest of the dads. Dankest dad, how you doing tonight? Doing great. Excited to uh, watch some playoff Hearthstone and uh, get into this action on a Sunday night. That's Thanks, right. Saku. You got it. Yeah, we potentially could have three matches. So we're going to have two Legacy and one Pro. Um, and then we have Myanodon, my old faithful Sunday night show co-host, Mr. Man himself. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Like you said, old faithful, reliable, just like a, that Yellowstone geyser out there. <laughs> like clockwork. I'll be here. Happy to be here. Excited. Playoff time. Yep. We got uh, a few playoff games today. Like you said, we might have up to three, depending on how uh, some of the other ones go. Uh, but we, our first one up, we have the Gold Conference. It's Oops All Justin versus Season 24 5v5 Legacy Clown contestants. Uh, it is neck and neck right now, six and six, tied up. Three more matches to play here. And we're going to start off with Skirt Reynolds versus You Kidding Me. Skirt Reynolds on Oops All Justin. You Kidding Me on. Uh, that other long name that I was saying, uh, but yeah, looking looking to be a, a fine match here in the five seed. Dangus Dad, what are you thinking? Looking at these these classes uh, and, and these these two players here across the season. Honestly, I feel a little bit bad for Skirt Reynolds. A uh, pretty big PR disadvantage right out the gate. Uh, down oh, in a yeah. Lowly 173 versus a massive 174. Mm-hmm. So. Will be a bit of an upset if the Justins can pull it off, but you know both players have very strong lineups here. And jokes aside, I think we're going to be in for a great match of Hearthstone. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, let's talk about those classes here. We have DK, DH, Hunter, and Warrior for Skirt Reynolds, and DH, Priest, Rogue, and Warrior for You Kidding Me. So both players are the DH and Warrior, but differing uh, on the other choices there. Uh, you know, DH has the flexibility, Warrior just being you know, pretty strong. I can, I can see the argument for both of those, but what, what do you think about those, uh, the flexibility or the, the choices there on those other two classes uh, between the two players? So I think it's pretty interesting uh, going with the, the rogue and priest. I think uh, you kidding me probably is pretty happy not to see the priest over there on skirt Reynolds side. Uh, those are, you know, all of these classes that are broad are the cream of the competitive crop right now, but Priest and Rogue uh, tend to want to see the other classes because Priest can do very well against Death Knight, very well against Hunter, very well against Rogue, very well against Warrior. And, you know, the Hunter and Death Knight, though, they are probably just here to maybe try to beat up on this Warrior, Demon Hunter a little bit, and just get in there. But Demon Hunter such a flexible class can be a risky plan to try to leave it up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and looking at uh, all the team kind of lineups, it looks like uh, Season 24, 5v5 Legacy Clown contestants had a, a similar kind of thought process there. A lot of them bring the, the priest and a rogue, or at least the priest, uh, to yeah. this matchup, uh, hoping maybe to, to beat up on those other classes, like you said. Uh, but you, we're seeing Oops All Justin kind of went, uh, you know, all over the place here with their choices uh, across the board. So a little bit more difficult to predict. We're seeing it kind of play out into, you know, five game series so far. Uh, we'll see if it just, that trend does continue. And, and if we're going to get all the way to that last match, not exactly sure when um, that uh, always just in time versus Neji game is happening. Um, so we'll, we'll know, uh, but that third match potentially today would be that infinite versus super chicken. We'll see what happens here. And in that next match, depending on when it happens, uh, but yeah, we do, it looks like have those bands already. So I was going to ask you what you thought we were going to see, but we, we know the answer. So, uh, we have, uh, you kidding me, uh, band, the, uh, Saku, can you, is the DH band or you can me band skirts dh so yeah you can me band uh skirts dh and skirt band okay. you can me warrior so Ooh, great that's okay old. really interesting ban over on skirt side so i am curious to see uh what's going on over there that's actually uh very very interesting some so. some tech since this is since this is legacy series so where there's it's a closed deck list maybe there's some Tex versus it, who knows? Could be, and you know, let them cook. Uh, already played in the Hero series, but uh, yeah, yep. we might be seeing some cooking right here live on a <laughs> Sunday night. So, <laughs> yep. So, all right. So the players are ready to go. So for our casters, we're going to be spectating. Uh, you kidding me? First, would so be at the bottom of the screen for our viewers with Skirt Reynolds, skirting his way to the top of the screen. So I'm just going to let the players know they could start, and then we can start having fun casting. Absolutely. Let's get into it. Um, any any thoughts here on what they bring first? Those bands, like you said, pretty interesting. The Warrior Band, um, you know, maybe just not wanting to see Enraged Warrior here. Uh, but yeah, what what do you think with those bands? Are they going to bring those opposing uh, decks? Are we going to see the Warrior first from Skirt? Um, or are we going to see that DH first? I'm guessing. Uh, from you kidding me. I'm going to guess the Demon Hunter is going to be here right away. That's my prediction. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't be surprised uh, to to see it come up here uh, in the you know legacy and conquest format. Uh, you, you don't mind bringing that powerful deck. Uh, let's see here yeah. if we you just want to get a win somewhere. So just waiting on those eyeballs. Yep, glad to have the eyeballs back these days. I know it that... is. it's very good for our, for. Our, uh... Old eyes. It's like, oh, yeah, there's something on it. Let's go. All right. We are heading in. We have the hunter into the priest. Yeah, so totally wrong on our predictions here, but let's see what we do have. It looks to be some sort of control priest, uh, which would be expected. And on the other side, 
could be a uh, hunter of any sort but yeah still unclear probably hound hunter but could still be faced with what we're seeing right now yes and i think both players have to be pretty happy with these opening hands these are the cards you want to see probably except dirty rat or in you kitten me's hand but the rest of these are all excellent yeah, and you know, I feel like this was uh, what Skirt was hoping for here, getting this this hunter into the priest, uh, you know, can get under it potentially here before it can stabilize. We'll see if that does turn out to be the case. Yeah. There's a lot of aggression there for Skirt in the hand to start. Yeah, and it does look like it's Hound. Yeah. And with this uh, start here, we know uh, Kitten's going to be taking things pretty passively all the way up until turn four. So it might be time for Skirt to pile in this damage and to get things started. Yeah, a bunch of bananas is going to be pretty powerful here. Yeah. Um, or even just Spirit Poacher, yeah. find the bananas. There's so many flexible options. Yeah, I do like the Spirit Poacher coin a banana here. Spread out a little bit. Uh, we don't know exactly what the Priest is yet. A control Priest will have some answers to just that one minion. So good to, to spread the damage. And choosing to hold back even with that coin. Oh, and there's Handmaiden. A little bit interesting. Not mm -hmm. a guaranteed inclusion in Priest, but means Kitten's going to have a little bit more gas than most control Priests do. Yeah, we'll have to play some of those spells here first to get it online, and mm -hmm. those power cords are not too exciting at the moment. A uh, bit uninspiring here with a bit of a lack of power, but whoop. This is time. the opposite of a lack of power here. It is time. We're going to go off here, it looks like, maybe even with a selective breeder and a Whoa. coin here. Well, we have we power go. cords. Here we are. I wonder, though, you know, for those of you at home, the power cords from the pre-stream just kicked in right there when you said power cords, my Anadon. That was pretty slick. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see, though, mulling over the breeder versus more bananas, and I think we're going to see the breeder. Yeah, it is going to be the breeder here. Grab a King Crush, maybe, or a Hydralodon. Yeah, yeah going for the Hydralodon. And board clear there is a pretty important pickup for Kitten. Can maybe mop things up a bit. Yeah, really, really important pickup. Shadow Word Ruin could potentially round that out uh, if something gets a little too big. Yeah. Uh, choosing Actually, to go with the, the theater, theater, though, yeah. Oh, and Shard is also nice. Shard, shard is definitely uh, something that you're going to be looking for here. Yeah. Um, right now, yeah, spreading out some of that. Uh, but critically, not really getting over the, you know, clean the scene uh, with that selective breeder here. Uh, it does, uh, along with ETC, mop up this board nicely. Yeah. So might be able to stabilize here at 18 here for you, Kitten Man. Yeah, clean the scene, going to come out. Um, yeah, I wonder if there was... Yeah, there was less damage potential, but if we had placed the bananas on the taunt, would have been able to keep that out of range as well. Definitely. And here it looks like we're just going to see a couple monkeys coming down. Yeah, slowly emptying the barrel of monkeys. Oh, and school teacher is big. Really nice pickup here. Interesting options. Does go in the end with the flash shield. Just trying to stay alive as long as possible. Just saying, you know, if I outlast your damage, uh, there's not much you can do. Yeah, and this flash shield might even be coming down on the ETC just to fight for board in this position. Yeah, I like that a lot here. That is going to be the play. Yep. Yeah, 
I just hold on to that shard no need to trade it away. Yeah. But, uh, it's a good turn to play one of those Hydralodons, so... Guessing we'll see that pressure come out here. Dirt. Yeah, I think so. Just, uh... Mulling the options here a little bit for Skirt, but maybe thinking about the Hound as well, but just not lining up quite right here. Yeah, uh, Tin has actually done a good job positioning the minions to be as annoying as they can be for the Hound. And Hydralodon comes down and does what it's meant to, but see if... Uh... It can produce an answer here because right now there does not seem to be an apparent one. Yeah, I mean shard could start things, but yeah, gonna gonna go for the school teacher. See if maybe this Nagaling can find the answer. Another shard not gonna do it either. Yeah, I'd be unhappy with love everlasting though. That's a pretty that's actually a pretty nice pickup. Doesn't clear this board, but does do something. Does do something. Can at least silence these uh, Hydra heads. Yeah. And a little bit of a miscue there, potentially, but Kitten could have gotten that Nagaling down alongside that shard and put this yeah. Love Everlasting into play this turn. So see if that little bit of a tempo loss could be costly. Yeah, absolutely. And that uh, one attack does line up nicely into these uh, these heads as well, which could have made things a little bit more awkward. Right now, though, on the other side, still looking at 18 health, so not out of it, but needs to, to start winning back this board quickly, get chipping away a little bit more damage. So maybe even considering... Uh, sending a lot of this face. We have 10, 12 damage available. Yeah, I like sending it all upstairs and going with the star power. That's uh, that's the play I'm a fan of. Or even just some barrels of monkeys. Yeah, but... just set up for this King Crush to take the game here soon. Yeah, just pushing the damage as much as possible. King Crush could do it soon if we don't see a heal each turn. Yeah, uh, and to clear the board, that's going to help though. Do have Astalor yeah. as well. Yeah, probably will just have to be the whirlpool. Dirty rat. Ooh, are we risking it here? Hoping the armor keeps us alive. That's pretty. Dangerous. Okay, going to well, this play works. Cast the, yeah, this this works with the uh, the whirlpool here. Yeah. Whirlpool and then the vendor. Yeah, pretty slick. Also, is going to take out uh, Skirt's Astalor, assuming that he has one in the deck. So another source of damage limited here for the hunter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hey, so now that. maybe trying to establish some sort of a board here, push the damage and, and hope that next turn you have it with the, the King Crush. So has to hit the hero power to oh. set that up. Yeah, I mean, we could see the Wild Spirits here, Barrel of Monkeys. There's a lot of ways to do this. And uh, it's not the hit that Skirt wanted to see. No. Still has not found the weapon at all. And smartly leaves the minion up, but oh, cannibalized is brutal here alongside that Astalor. Yeah, thinking about Theotar here as well, or the Handmaiden. So starting off, it looks like with the Handmaiden, seeing if that changes anything else. Ah. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is going to make it harder and harder to get through. This is a pretty risky choice, but yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, that's still, I it does think, work out okay. Yeah, not I mean, a fantastic outcome here, but. Ultimately, though, the crush gets to connect with the face. So if uh, Skirt wants to send it here, he absolutely can. Yeah, it's not a bad play. Has the P Faithful Companion's next turn to maybe find... Uh, I guess you have a Hound left. What do you? What else do you have? Yeah. I think here, though, I like the choice that's like, that he's seems to be considering, which is star power, barrel of monkeys, and the hero power. Just to save the damage, get as much through as possible. And yeah. Yeah. Four, four HP. How are you getting out of range now if you're you kidding me? Yeah, we do know the Astalor is in the hand, so that is five armor, but has to be able to combo that with some sort of healing as well. Yeah, and the the Point fan club and the, yeah. the fan club and the pop I think should take care of business alongside Astalor, but I feel like uh Kitten definitely took one of the slower routes to what is likely a victory here. Yeah, but... absolutely. Yeah, at a comfortable twelve <laughs> now. Yeah. Uh... Faithful companions have anything here for us. Yeah, not really great. Uh... Oh. And there is the hound. I think that that's it. What else would we have in the deck? Well, one cool play could be to Finley for a second copy of Faithful Companions and get lethal that way. That would work. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, I like that. You put all of your beasts at the bottom. You know exactly where they are. So you know your your second faithful should hopefully, as long as you find it. Yeah, got to move quickly, though. Yeah, Skirt but, Reynolds it is seemingly awesome. eyeing it out. Yeah, I think but he spotted it, but it's just too not late. Not pulling the trigger, yeah. Not able to pull the trigger this turn. So gonna just play out a hound, it looks like. Yep. And hound, then hero hero power. Off. Yeah, just... Keep the train moving. Uh, now, now that hound is on the board, though, I'm curious if we might see a synchronize to take a hound for, for Kitten. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that, but it looks like we're just eyeing this Astalor here. Push the damage, get a copy of an Astalor. We can just keep Astaloring every turn. For the rest of the game, I mean, I, I like that play as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just... personally, though, I think these Priest players get a little greedy sometimes trying to actually kill their opponent. That's, that's how you die. You got to drag it out forever. Uh-oh. Yeah. It's the heart. Yeah, we haven't uh, lost our crush yet, though. Uh, a... So a little awkward. Maybe is it like a, a trade thinly here? Do you risk the second faithful off the top, though? I, I mean, I'm willing to roll the dice on Finley just as it is and then play with the other five cards. I think it's pretty good odds you're going to find something helpful. Because really, what's this, this hand is not doing much for Skirt outside of the Finley. The Stranglethorn is only pulling a Hound and some Hydralodons right now, which doesn't really solve the problem. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we're dead to the second Astalor, but how do we ever win doing this either? Yeah, I, I like going for the lethal. Just, uh... Because, you know... Well, let's see. We might have been able to get it here. Did we get it, though? Ozic, that is a card. Yeah, he would have had it. Would have been lethal. Yeah. Uh, what a shame. Well, Let's could get go. a copy of our King Crush here, I suppose. 
Yeah. And uh, is it enough, though, next turn? We do have the Astolor to follow this up once again. Oh, actually, Theotar being being played here. That's that's an interesting one. I mean, you have to take the Faithful Companion, right? Oh, no. I think... Uh, I oh, think because I... you are going to top deck the Crush, right? The Crush is always the next card. No, no, it's not. Oh, sorry. No, it's not. We didn't play... Uh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. So, I think you have to take the Faithful Companions, yeah. no? Yeah, I mean, as long as Skirt spots it, I don't think there's anything that can be done about this lethal now on the other side. Except for maybe. Oh, well, both barrels of monkeys have been used, so I don't think that's an out here. Yeah, I mean, the King Crush definitely looks appealing because it's eight damage you know can connect, but the Faithful Companions, knowing that the, the King Crush is in the deck because of the Selective Breeder, this is that was just a huge risk. Yeah. Wow. And uh, after all that, I thought you kidding me had it, but as long as Skirt spots it here, should just be lethal. And yeah. Yep, and that'll do there it. There you go. Here comes the, the King Crushes. And that will do it. Yeah, you kidding me. Had the option to take that away. Yeah, and just did not see it. But uh, Skirt uh, likes to dig up, dig up dinosaurs. Yeah. And uh puts uh puts getting down uh one game to none. Yeah, wow, that's a that's a big win there. I thought that uh you kidding me was about to turn it around, but just did not spot that uh potential lethal and uh chose to, to go for the, the, the scary big dino that we knew was in the hand, which I mean fair enough. <laughs> that was also quite a, a threat, but yep. Uh, needed to to just survive, and you know we were on that game plan of of using the Astolor to win, and and uh, there was still potential for that if we had just committed to that. Um, after you know we we theotard the um the the spell. Sorry, I've lost the name. Faithful companions. Faithful companions. That's right. Uh, if we had taken that, uh, you know, there was still a line there that potentially could have got us there. But now on to the next game. It is going to be the DK here for Skirt Reynolds. And you kidding me saying, I'm going to run this back. I feel good about this priest. We've got all the control tools. Uh, you know, maybe a, a slight misplay last time, but I think I can beat these aggressive decks. It looks to be Frost DK. So it is going to be aggressive. And, and we'll see if it's able to get under this priest. Yeah, and I think that generally speaking, the matchup is pretty good for the Frost DK these days. So, on paper, I think Skirt odds aren't that bad. And uh, Priest has found the good card, though. So, it's going to be a little tough here for the Death Knight if Priest can find all their answers. But it's Morkin time. Let's go, yes, Skirt. Yes, Morkin time indeed has couple of options here uh probably just set up that bone breaker little time. plays around the hero power there but uh can find just the right card for the job and doesn't play the fan club i don't know what's up with that and uh apparently kitten does not either yeah interesting choice there saying i'm just gonna hold back this this free play yeah. Gert just taking it a little bit slow here. Wants to get value out of all these cards in the hand. Yeah. Maybe get this coin to do a tempo play instead of just drawing some cards with the 2 2, but. Oh, well, I think Kitten got, uh, got the good end of this deal there, baiting out that weapon swing, and. You know, when he has that healing in hand but we just yeah. have to see a school teacher here from skirt right yeah i don't see a, a much of a better option we've been holding on to this coin we need to start applying pressure but instead skirt saying i'm holding on to this coin it's going to really come into play here at some point you just wait and see yep saving money for a rainy day and let's see if it's ever going to rain you kidding me though with the first school teacher here 
Flash Heal, Whispers, both great. I think Flash Heal is just too juicy to pass up in this matchup. Goes for the Whispers. I think with a couple board clears in hand, that seems maybe like it's a bit overkill on the removal, but hey, it doesn't hurt to be able to get rid of your opponent's stuff. Yeah, I think I think with the Holy Nova, the Light Bomb, I, I'm, I'm with you, but uh, don't mind it. I also cleaned the scene. Yeah, we're we're pretty filthy with options uh, to remove stuff. But uh, that five health might not come into play, so we'll see. Yeah. The weapon plus the Frost Strike. This turn looks like it skirts Oyster. Like he has so much he can do with it. Yeah, I'm thinking just... about yeah, I think just thinking about trading here. Also was hovering that sidekick for a second as well. Yeah. Getting getting to the that play you were calling out does manage to get the frost rank out. What frost rune card are we taking? Goes for the glacial advance. Yeah. Yeah, it's Picks. a lot of damage to start pushing, and there's the other bone breaker as well, so. Yep. Nice use of mana. Starts applying the pressure. Absolutely. I like the school teacher option here. You have that uh whispers of the deep noggling to back it up in case this that one isn't a hit and so many flexible choices but yeah you kidding me hovering on that holy nova saying i don't want to risk any extra damage here uh, i want to save this noggling but uh, yeah in the end going with the school teacher interesting options here did we what did we pick there light it burns I mean. a light it burns so even more removal with a light it burns in hand Saying you are not getting any minions on the board here, sir. No more minions for you. I'm just just not gonna gonna let it happen. School teacher gets played finally here. Another glacial advance. advance. Nice. Yeah. You love to see it. Absolutely. Howling blast may be the other consideration here. It's one less damage, but does get uh that AoE that could be you know, could be interesting. Does remove that 1-1. One, one. We know there's another Noggling as well. Yeah, I think I like going for the Howling Blast, sending it face and using the horn to uh, do the Frost Strike. But we'll see. Glacial Advance accomplishes something similar if we see the coin or horn used this turn. But Skirt's got to think fast. Yeah, got to start making some plays here. Does get the trade to uh, push the damage face. And it looks like we're going for the Glacial Advance. Better do it quickly if we're going to play it out. Are we going to do anything else on top of it? Well, he or... can't if he does this ordering. Yeah, so we'll this see. is not... Yeah, so just going to push the four damage face, say... That's fine by me. I don't need that that mana reduction. I've got plenty of, of stuff to do. I just didn't have enough time. Uh, now it's such a commanding position for you kidding me. Wow. This is really just all of it. That Holy Nova, draw some cards. Yeah. Start pushing damage. Looks like we're going face too. So you kidding me again on the train of I'm going to beat you down. I don't care about your stuff as much anymore. I have all this removal. You know, maybe we, oh. You're just going to leave up this 4-2? Yeah, that's interesting. Really just no respect for the, the potential on the other side, especially, you know, a turn. They have the coin. They can frost from his fury here. Uh, I'm I'm not sure about that play, that you're just asking to just take extra damage for no reason. Yeah, I agree. I feel like we're going to see 11 damage go to the face this turn and something else happen next turn, but 
Yeah, I think it's hard to, to pass up that Fury here. You saw them just play out some minions, try to just set things up, and, you know, eventually a lot of their removal is, 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 is global. It's not just, uh, you know, their, you know any minion, or it's not just your minions, it's every minion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't mind kind of forcing out their removal now that they've committed to, to minions as well. Um, I really like coining out this Frostworm's Fury. Let's see if Skirt agrees or if we go with uh, something slightly different. Yeah, I think after thinking it over a little bit, decides, yeah, that this, this feels good. <laughs> yeah. Turns out Skirt is a go-face enjoyer. Oh, no, though, the... Best draw in the deck for Kitten. Such a hard punish. Yeah, pretty powerful follow up there. Keep the cards Heal up. flowing. Heal. Yeah. We are uh, starting to overdraw here though <laughs> as well which is an interesting problem to have yeah that's i'm that's the priest player i'm never complaining about that i like having cards and i'm guessing the kitten does too and also finish this card with nine cards in hand every turn with nine yeah. cards in hand every time a little bit of board lock but can clear the locations next turn so not a big deal at all and goes for the hero power instead Right now fighting a really difficult battle. Chooses to go for the Frost Strike here. Try to find something else. Hardcore Cultist is a nice pickup. And maybe create a situation where dealing with one of these minions is a little easier. Instead goes for the Defrost for some reload, which also is pretty good. Yeah, currently six corpses. Not that exciting, but... Able to get that defrost to go off. I mean, another defrost, harmonica, plague strike. That plague strike is big. Yeah, I like the plague strike here. I don't like this though. It's a little, yeah. I would have liked to see the swing and then plague strike into the six five, but. Agreed. It's not quite lining up the way you want it to. Oh, They're just filthy with removal. There is a cannibalize, like you said. This is looking like a win for the priest. Mm -hmm. Just not enough of that aggression early on from Skirt, and it's going to be hard to come back from this spot. Really does not want to remove this uh, school teacher. Really doesn't want to remove it. I don't know. You kidding me? Just keep playing. Keeps playing a dangerous game here. Just leaving these minions up, but probably not going to matter too much. It looks like we're maybe finally deciding. Okay, maybe I don't risk it. They're at nine health. Yeah. Just decide to finally clear the board. Yeah. <laughs> And set up that lethal. Skirt with not too many options here. Goes for the defrost. Is there anything in the deck that can save him? Well, Those are not... Could be Nerubian. Quite, yeah, I mean, if there's going to be something, maybe it's in there. I mean, there is a corpse explosion. That is an answer. Blood boil also prolongs the game. These are not Ooh. those things. Those are not those things, indeed. Glacial advance, though, will keep him alive, so I think that's probably the pick. Yeah, staying alive is, is usually good. It Does it win the game? Probably not, but... It does have the Astalor, maybe 
set up some damage that way in a few turns. Ooh, goes for the Plague Strike. Is that also keep him alive? Can Glacial Advance, yeah, the 8-6, Plague Strike. Though not getting the discount on the Plague Strike, a little awkward. Uh, oh, okay. Well, and we're not even buffing the foul leg. Oh, I see. What? Okay, I see. Interesting. Yeah, and, you know, I think this is to try to clear some room for that marrow manipulator so that maybe eventually one day, aspirationally, it can do some damage, but that'll do it. That will do it. And 1-1 one, one here in the match. Priest does get through. So it's that Frost DK has to either beat the Rogue or the DH. You think we're going to see that again, or are we going to see that Warrior come out? I'm, I'm actually not sure. I feel like, I feel like I'd be inclined to believe the DK is going to come back, but yeah, I really don't know. So let's see. It's more important than what I think is uh, what Skirt thinks. Because ultimately, he's the one making the call. <laughs> Definitely uh, what it comes down to here. We'll see uh, what these players think. Uh, I don't mind either options here, honestly, for Skirt. Um, but, I, but I also, you know, I, I don't mind just kind of pushing that DK one more time. Mm-hmm. You know, testing the waters, maybe find out what that DH is. Could give you some information on a, a safer sort of matchup, potentially. Absolutely. But looks like we're getting our answer right now. Yeah. And the Death Knight is back. Death Knight is back, as you said. And the Rogue comes out here on the other side. Looks to be Miracle like Rogue. Miracle, and, uh, well, that's... One, two good cards in the opening hand in this matchup, so I feel like Kitten has to be pretty happy, and you know, and it's a bad matchup for the Rogue on paper, but really anything can happen once those potion bells start making concoctions. Absolutely. On the other side, I mean, you love to see that bone uh, breaker, yeah, but the other two getting tossed aside. Yeah. Oop. Seems like powerful hands for both players here, but I think if I had to be in one person's shoes, I'd want to be uh, in kittens. But wow, electing to hold the concoctor, get uh, the good choices off the belt, maybe. Yeah, interesting. Just uh, not valuing it, hoping maybe to get those weapon swings, I suppose. Yeah. Not trying to just give them an easy target for that. Uh, now, do you ever ask to lure here? The two damage is nice, but are you really, you know, with this hand, are you ever waiting till turn five? You got like a, a turn four already. You've got, you know, potentially a turn six, turn seven. I mean, maybe you can play it on turn five, but. Yeah, I like slamming it. I think yeah. it's just the tempo choice gets, gets things going. And, you know, Bone Spike Posit can be such a power play next turn to swing the board. Oh, double gleaming. And that is a, it's quite, a lot of draw. Yeah, that's quite the power spike there. All right. Oh, and there's a Shara. Wow. Yeah, wow. Wow. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Yep. So we'll see Bone Spike with Pazic. Try to limit this uh limit this damage and put something out on the board to be a real threat. Yeah, really awkward here. You don't want to give him uh, those those bots. No, I mean, you, you really do don't want to be playing them either. <laughs> for, yeah. At this point. That catch twenty two. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like we might play the Sith Sarian and, and hope no. Audio bot's too powerful. Yeah. So we're definitely going to see this gleaming concoction here. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a strong hand if we just had a location. Yep. Well, it's a strong hand with that one, too. It, it is. It, it is. And I like bumping there with the POSIC instead of trading, because as the rogue, you can win this if you limit the damage you're taking early, but... Let's see. I think, uh, if you're a kitten, you can't be unhappy with what this POSIC has done for him. It's, uh, it's really soaked up so much damage and so much tempo from this Death Knight. And there's yeah, the graveyard. As if on command. Oh, wow. So, not this turn, but maybe next time we can see a bit of a pop-off. Yeah, I think next turn might be a huge pop-off. There goes the horn. Yep. And a million card, not that big a deal here. I'm Skirt here. I am ready to start going face and send it upstairs. This is just... Yep, that'll work. Don't trade for him, Skirt. Just uh, point everything at the face. Maybe bump the 1-1 one -one in the weapon, but... Yeah, 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 there, we, there it is. It's all coming up for us, DK. Unless uh, we see a big turn here. Yeah, this has to be the pop-off. Krabatoa, though. That's not a pop-off. That is Wait not quite the pop-off. I mean, it fights this board, I suppose, but we can't wait that many more turns. It looks like we're going to have to. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there even is some argument made there to just hold back that last claw, but... Yeah. Now, if I'm if I'm skirt, I am a big fan of sending as much damage face here as I can with this might of menethol, and just uh, really closing the door fast on this game. Yeah, I like that setup as well. Looks like considering the overseer to to maybe set up a, another pop off turn. Next turn with the, the Sarian trade, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I like sending the Glacial Advance with the Might and the, the Sarian to set Kitten to seven and set up a lethal with Frostworm's Fury and the second swing of Might. Yeah. With a little backup from the hand. It just seems super powerful. Yeah, I, li I like that too. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, that seems like the right play, but skirt still eyeing this overseer just trying to hold you know prolong this a little bit longer it looks like also yeah it does find the horn of winter double horn of winter it's going to be nice yeah next turn could really be a pop-off but like you said Ooh. would have had the potential setup and cult neophyte could slow things down here it is going to yeah. be the, the stin stone turn and and potentially that not setting up like you said uh could spell the end here for yeah. skirt. Fortunately, though, I think that uh, playing the graveyard actually buys skirt a lot of time because, you know, one of the hard parts about this matchup is that the rogue doesn't actually have an easy way to win just by playing a huge minion and killing them with it early just because the Death Knight has access to these freezes. Yeah. So even though this graveyard is going to make an impressive number, it's really not going to accomplish all that much. Yeah, as long as, ooh, I was about to say, as long as Frostworms is playable, but I think we could have, yeah, right now it's, 
It, it, it is only discounted two, right? It's still going to be nine mana, but Might of Menethil is going to clean this up. Unless yeah. uh, there's some more magic mana here that I am not aware that Kitten has. Yeah, there is not. And uh, yeah, the Might of Manathal. Manathil. Manathil? Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to uh, ask Arthas himself one of these days. How do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> But for now, uh, seems like uh, it's time to equip the weapon, go face, and the real heads-up play that might not be super obvious is for uh, Skurik to actually send the Overseer into the 9-9 to play around the Blackwater Behemoth. I think that that probably is the way to lock this up 100%. But if he doesn't, there's an out. Yeah. Absolutely. And playing in more minions also does not play around that out. So going 100% into just trying to win yeah, uh, from the... And it looks like... Holy Blackwater Behemoth that... isn't even good enough anymore, actually. Just because of all this damage. This does play around it, but I don't know if Spirit was considering that. Now we see one. It's there the Blackwater is. Behemoth. And you could get a second one here. That is the key. Yep. Or something else here that, that's helpful. Well, should have played around it. He could have. Because I think that that is good enough because this damage isn't going to connect. He needs to find something off of the Nerubian. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, for those of you watching the stream, it seems like a real high roll for Kitten, but Skirt <laughs> actually had a way to beat this 100%. So, just a little bit of a matchup experience thing there. These are not looking like the answers. The ones. Uh, maybe grab the uh, death growl and hope, but born in winter. I mean, is the army? In. I don't know. If you only have three spots. Yeah. Uh, so you can connect with six. I mean, army. If the army fur, no, you just don't no. have enough. There's just yeah. not enough here. So has to just hold off one more turn. But that is another eight healing that can connect. Unless uh, I, I guess you have to clear yeah. off the one four. No. So I like this. I like leaving the board full, yeah. making them waste the last graveyard and you know unable to use a lot of the potential cards in hand. It does mean, though, that 8 heal is happening this turn, so hoping that there's enough damage to get through that yep. shadow step here. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. There's, I mean, like, there's the funny play of using the location here and shadow stepping and replaying Kalak. I think that probably is pretty winning. Because uh, this Blackwater Behemoth still yeah. will do its thing, which is a little counterintuitive, but it does still work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, no, you're right. If you had played the the while your locator while your um, board was full, if you played the graveyard first and then shadow step, the Col Colac could have had another taunt in the way there. Yeah. Uh, instead, though, just gonna make some trades. Yep. And honestly, this will work. It's probably enough, <laughs> but. Uh... Yeah, I mean, like, what's really going to be the thing here is just this behemoth getting yeah. one more hit in. And you know, now, uh, you kitten me is effectively at 24, and uh, it's going to be hard for a Skirt to either kill him, stop this backswing, or both. His citadel stands strong. 
Yeah, I think taking things a little too slow there on Skirt's side. I think there was a chance earlier on, as you know, where you were saying earlier, we d held on that one turn on the might of Menethil and uh, could have set up a really powerful Frostform. We could have played around the potential Behemoth as well, knowing that the Horn was probably in the hand. And then we actually saw the second Horn come down. I mean, a lot of things really went well for, for Kitten there as far as the rolls, but... Um, you know, played to the outs and, and Skirt just not playing around those options might be a big difference here and it does manage to at least clear this off uh, but you're not too happy about the situation uh, lethal still on the board, is there enough yeah, army of the dead it does get four so it's enough to at least take out the two largest minions but yeah, that's not what we're going to see it does give a lot of heal here with the double trade as well so yeah and Oof. this is and this is just lethal here because of the uh, Astalor and the hero yeah. power. So, Kurt doesn't know, but we will be uh, going to the next one. And the rogue is able to pull out this uh, matchup that's unfavorable on paper because, you know, I think they were just a little more comfortable in the scramble situation than the Death Knight. And, you know, that that's, you know, given this meta can be kind of high rolly to some degree. Like, this is where the practice and those reps come in, and I think Kitten was just more comfortable in the situation. Yeah, I have to agree with that. And now, Skirt just on on just the defensive here, trying to find a win. Has to beat the, the Demon Hunter twice now. Going to just keep running with the DK, saying, I was trying to get this DK with the, with, or, uh, the uh, DH with the DK. This is my chance now hoping that it's going to get through and then we'll worry about that warrior uh, mm. but dh here for you can be the only remaining deck uh, i will say for skirt that you know given these decks that kitten me has actually shown up with uh, frost death knight looks like it was a great read and a great choice but mm. it just seems like it has not been working out the way skirts hoped for and hopefully he can turn his luck around this game Yeah, this is looking like Outcast DH to me. Which I think, like you said, that, that Frost DK may line up okay, but... Yep, and, uh, you know, that is a Spectral on the left. Uh, Kitten's got to be excited for that, and, well... Arms dealer foul egg, yeah. Both of us once again, another game where decks are having powerful starts. Cool. And I've got the uh I've got the stream up on my other monitor and it seems like uh Twitch chat is just about to get to the end of that last game. They're just a turn <laughs> or two off, so uh yeah, excited to see what they think of that in a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh security right away. I like this from Kitten to get this Murlocula onto the board as quickly as possible before those waves of freezes come down in the late game. Really smart adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. And holding back on that foul leg there with the arm stealer on turn one. Uh, I understand who onto the coin. We've seen Skirt do it quite a lot here. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if it does come into play if we get an early Fury or something off off uh, or even you know the Sarian this turn yeah i i really don't like this because the way that the deem or the death knight can beat the demon hunter is just by getting in that early chip and closing the door with the freezes and burn at the end and this is just giving kitten a little bit too much health and a little bit too much time to get things going yeah right now has a couple of options here for you, kitten me. Yeah, and I like this choice here. Can actually clear this off and uh, and just keep getting these one ones. Get the uh, Merlocula infused. This is such a massive board swing and such a big punish for the passive turns on script from skirt. Absolutely, really, really powerful play there from you, kitten me. Has the the Hawk Strider surviving as well. Uh, this is going to be tough to, to come back from uh, for Skirt. Uh, gonna, I mean, Might of Menethil, I guess, to just 
stem the bleeding here, remove the the hawk strider. This is not what you want to be doing. Yeah, it does. Well, the, the three that you're looking for though with that trade so a little bit lucky on that one but yeah but the wretched exile is still here and that's yeah. a problem that is and a the second big, one big problem. down Oof. yeah don't mind that it yeah. does take away a little pressure but healing up putting two more cards in hand both are outsiders wow And this Merlocula will just erase any face racing that Skirt is trying to put out here. Yeah, I mean, I think the race is over. <laughs> I don't think there's a race happening anymore. This is just trying to stabilize the board here for Skirt. Try to do anything to get back back into this uh, game here. Is able to clear off these uh, Wretched Exiles finally. Uh, but that was quite a lot of pressure and a lot of power and value developed there. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think at this point now, it's just too late. Like, uh, the, the cards are the cards have been added to the hand. The power is here. Ooh, Halveria for even more push. Wow. That's uh, probably not what, what Kitten wants to do right now, but can still just start spending some of this gas and hitting the board and really make Skirt sweat it out. I grew some... Wow, and actually gonna get the Helveria going now, saying, I have the free Shambling Chow, like, I want this damage starting to ramp right now. Yeah, you can remove my Helveria, but I'm setting up a potential lethal here. You're gonna need a good answer. Brigadara is a pretty good answer there. But 11 health, we are starting to get real, real low. Is yeah. there a lethal through the spectral site in the deck? I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any. Yeah, not with the health area already. I guess the the spectral hit the glaive tar. That would have been exactly enough, and it was. So a little bit of an ordering faux pas there. Yeah. But not a lot of ways in this deck for the Death Knight to actually freeze the face. So I think taking this Glaive Tar swing kind of locks it out. Yeah, so a little bit of a, you know, trying to get that extra, you know, attack on the Slither Spear. Did end up causing the Miss Lethal here, but uh, probably not going to matter uh, very much here. As long as we see this Glaive Tar come out. Yep, and now it's up to school teacher and vizier to find a way out of this jam. Yeah, unfortunately, the Frostworm Siri not going to stop the face. Yeah, there's... So I think that the only out here is to Frost Strike the Merlocula to then to play the school teacher and hit Howling Blast. I think that's the only way to survive, but maybe the Frost Strike can give another way that makes Icy Touch good enough. So we'll see if Skirt finds his way out of here. What's in the box, school teacher? Do you have the answer for us? Trade into the two three and then frenzy or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, guess I mean it doesn't work just because the doesn't do anything. Yeah. yeah, gotta hit the icy touch. It's the only out, yeah. and it's not even good enough anymore. So, unfortunately, uh... yeah, that oh, is gonna be. Oh, it's just too oh. late. Not, not enough time. Not the right discover. Tough showing, and with that, you kick me. It takes it home. Yeah, you can be take, getting a huge win there, putting Season 24 5v5 Legacy Clown contestants in the lead here in the series now. But this one almost going to Game 5 as well, going to Game 4, 3-1 win here. 
uh, for Yukimi. We didn't get to see that warrior from Skirt, uh, but that's going to be a really, really important win uh, to try to, uh, you know, face off against, I believe, uh, Albatross's play mistakes has already moved on there uh, in their matchup. So you have to play them in the finals. Uh, this is what we're playing for here. And, yep. uh do we have any update, uh, Saku, on that other match? Do we know when that is happening? We do not, not yet. So, but we do have right. the ability to interview uh, you, Kit me for a quick couple minutes. And while I try and get Mem and uh, McBanterface online here for the Pro Series that's coming up here. So, just one sec to get you, Kit me here. Hello, 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 congrats on the dub. Thank you. Um, it's definitely, uh, you know, a really fun matchup because me and Skirt are very good friends. So, mm -hmm. uh, very happy to secure the dub over him and bring his forward. I may have gotten it through a disgusting absolutely disgusting Hyrule on the oh. road. But... True. But in fairness, Skirt could have played around it, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, definitely was was a nice high roll, no doubt, uh, but there was some, some options to play around, like you were saying. Um, really well played on both sides, though, overall. Uh, you know, that PR difference, just too big for Skirt to overcome. Uh, yeah, and, and that really, you know, it really shows. Any any thoughts there? You know, first of all, on the match, any any of those uh, moments besides that, a uh, little bit of a high roll that you felt. Uh, you know, you were a little, you know, you started off with that loss, but able to just kind of take it from there. Um, yeah, in the in the priest versus hunter game, I don't know why I took King Crush. That was definitely yeah. silly. I like did it, and I was like. Well, I don't see the HSR thing telling me that the the one that was gifted is gone. So I, hopefully, I didn't <laughs> don't get punished for that mistake. <laughs> um, and then I did, but uh, yeah, well, well played by by Skirt. I just I think I actually just kind of rolled better in that that road game. I was so scared I wasn't getting it through. That yeah. was the that was my most fearful deck for trying to get a win on. So getting getting that surprise win was really a lot for me. Yeah, but I mean, solid play will get it done. And you know, we were kind of talking about it, and I think you were just comfortable in the situations. Like Roth DK, I think was is on paper favored into pretty much your whole lineup, and you know, sweeping it just means you're playing some good Hearthstone and you know making better choices, and that's what it's about. For sure, yeah. Yeah, and I think there was. Uh, I, I know you you didn't manage to uh, to see all of that, but uh, Skirt did have you know in in one of the DK matches uh, the ability to to potentially set up a lethal. Um, just held back there. Did not use the the might uh, at the right time. Kind of waited a little long as well. Uh, were you feeling you know w was there at any point in the DK that maybe you thought you'd be under more pressure or how did you feel in those that matchup into the dk overall um uh, i was pretty pretty much just thinking about for because my my decks are fairly board based so in my mind i'm thinking well if turn seven comes around and he is able to freeze the board uh four or three turns in a row counting for the one that gets generated because <laughs> it always happens you know well, uh, you can't anymore, thank God, right? Wait. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, now you do. So, <laughs> next, save, is... it for, save it for next round. I Yes, that is really good to know. I'm actually so glad that I changed that. <laughs> um, oh, did they make it so you can't discover a triple frost or triple ring? Yep. I did know that. I lied. I just forgot. Um, yeah, no, I was... I was just very, yeah, just not not the wins I was expecting to get for the matchups, for sure. I I didn't think Frosty K would be the 
the deck. Yeah, definitely a difficult one to pilot there. Uh, you know, there were a lot of interesting choices, difficult kind of decision points. Um, but yeah, overall, both of you, you know, able to to play really well. And like you said, you had a couple of nice rolls that helped you you take the win. Uh, but yeah, and any last thoughts here? Uh, you know, some thoughts for your team or, you know, there's a couple more matches there. We have one more on stream later today. And then I believe the potential fifth match will happen after that. Um, but yeah, and any thoughts there for your your teammate uh, or your opponents that are coming up here? Uh, thank you to my team for helping me prep, and uh, thank you to Skirt for being a homie. Um, and I hope we go to all the way to the end, take the dub. Uh, well, hopefully we get to see it in action next week. So. Yeah, best of luck to you getting great games tonight. Thank you. Good night. Take care. All right. So that brings us up to our Pro Series match, if I can get that up on screen. So it is. There we go. Yeah, just about time to ta change gears here. Like you said, into that Pro Series match, we have. Brushy Tuna versus Cheesemongers United. It is going to be McBanterface versus Memnark. Uh, while you get all the that info up there. It's all up now. Um, I, oh, yeah. Amazing. Uh, I believe we have the bands as well. We are not going to be seeing Priest on either side. So no a, a super long matches here uh, for us. Luckily, that does mean McBanter with that spell DH in Rage Warrior. And the Miracle Rogue and Memnark uh, with the Enraged Warrior, the Miracle Rogue, and that DH as well. Yeah, and uh, should be an interesting one. I think it was a little over a year ago, or two, almost two years ago, I want to say, I was uh, casting with uh, JR Juggerlaw when uh, these two clashed in the regular season. And was a really awesome time, so excited to see him back in it again, and almost a complete mirror. Yeah, very nearly a uh, complete mirror, as you said. Um, trying to look, what are the, the card differences here? It looks like slightly different Miracle Rogues. And I think that's it. Think yeah, I'm, it. I'm trying to, yeah, it looks, it looks otherwise yeah. the same to me as well, just one roaring applause in both. Yes, I think Warriors. they are. I think Saku already gave us the info there that they are the same, but the rogue differences are Amazing. very key. The yeah. uh, double neophyte is a huge, huge mirror breaker for McBanterface. And uh, as always, I think he's at his best on the X's and O's when it comes to that lineup submission. So, going to be a little bit uphill for Memnark if the rogues collide. Yeah, absolutely. Those neophytes, really, really powerful there. And I have HSR stats on, on screen as well, where the wonderful ability of banning priests for both players was, was I, I thank them for uh, profusely. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry for all the priest uh, uh, class enjoyers out there, but... Um, from a content side, it's a uh, group priest. Yes, band um, priest. But <laughs> both players are ready to go, so I can tell them to start. Um, just for our viewers, there we're going to have Memnark first to spectate. So it'll be at the bottom of the screen for our viewers, with McBanterface at the top. Let's see as they get into it. So this could determine, I think, if McBanter wins tonight, they clinch. Yeah, currently Cheese. Oh no, they don't. United are up ten eight. So right. So uh, Mem, sorry, go go ahead. Yeah, a sweep by Memnark would would clinch it, I believe. Uh, technically, a, a five game three two would still potentially be uh, salvageable for Brushy Tune, I believe. 
Um, or yeah, I think so. Or they could tie it actually. So no, that would uh, actually a win here, I believe, for Memnar could could end it. Right? Even if it's a three two, it's fourteen to ten. And then it goes to the tiebreaker, which would be the Cheesemongers United. If they do get the sweep on the last game. Yeah, so I believe it, it you know, this is a win to stay in it here for Brushy Tuna. Mm. Uh, let's see if McBanterface can do it. Yeah, and I think if there's any person in the league that you could have in the in this spot, where, in this must-win situation, I think uh, McBanterface might be the guy you pick. I think there's a pretty good chance that most people would uh, would want him to have the ball yeah. in this situation. <laughs> yeah, if you need an anchor, not a bad anchor to have. Yeah, uh, you know, holding you down here right when you need you. Just for our, our viewers out there that don't have Memnark or uh, McBanterface as friends on thing, we got McBanterface at 10 on the legend. Of, and then we got uh, Memnark in Wild, who's at 37. So we got some yeah. decent Hopefully players. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully McBanterface is okay. Double digits is uh, some, somewhat outside the norm for him. Yeah. So they're just being one number. Single digits. Yeah. All, All right. right. So we I, are into it. Eyeballs are in. All right. We have uh, McBanterface on the Warrior into the Rogue. So uh, Memnark has the slight leg up here in matchup, but. We'll see uh, if he can get it through, and would be huge for Memnark to dodge the rogue mirror. So, will be a big game for him here. And it looks like we're gonna have some powerful starts. Wow, Budax for the warrior. Uh, graveyard for the rogue. Uh, both classes are just ready here with their power plays on curve. So we'll see now uh, how Memnark wants to approach this. Probably will just be a hero power and pass, but you know it's really difficult. You don't want to damage this egg and just give McBanterface that free proc, right? But Maybe this fan of knives could lead to a situation where the 3-3 three, three is left up. Unclear, but a hit. Embers can be a great curve filler here. Grace Wretch also could be the drop. Just a lot of options for the <laughs> interface. And... I was just, just going to say, so is Crazed Wretch kind of getting swapped out for... Um... Uh, in place of uh, Grom? Yes, it is. I know that at the top of the ladder, it's proven to be just a bit better because it's a, a much more flexible card. And it still will get you that little bit of damage you need to close out games. So, Banter is electing to take it slow, goes for the Chorus Riff, and uh, hits the Anima Extractor. And uh, I think in the next turn or two, Sparks are going to fly. Yeah. Oh, another, another few riff. options here for Memnark. I uh, still can't see Banter's hand yeah, myself, so. so sorry about that. I'm trying to get so. that sorted. Both players have all the good stuff. Uh, Banter just picked up a second copy of Chorus Riff, which you could play to draw two minions this time, which could be a pretty big swing. Also has that 4-7 Anima Extractor that he'd probably like to get on the board at some point, so... We know Memnark has the answer, but not sure what's going through McBanterface's head right now. Really, really tough turn. So I guess this would be a good time to send my Anodon's uh... <laughs> particulars. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Yeah, yeah, right, right when you're. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we need you to. We need you to yeah, add him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, chorus yeah, rip picks up. Me. Ogra, 
in a Sun Fury champion. Well, that Olgra is uh, the buffed Olgra is always a tough one to deal with, and Banter has that uh, Embers Extractor combo with the champion on five. Looking good. Poison Belt, uh, a nice pickup here. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Memnarch wants to dig for a potion here or just uh, start clearing things off here with this uh, Bone Spike. Because uh, with the deadly conco Dreadful Concoction in hand, Memnarch really wants to get the trash off the board so that those uh, random destruction effects will hit home and get the biggest minion. Should be good to go now. Am I in it done? Got it. All right. And uh, I like this tempo graveyard here. Just to put on as much pressure as possible. And even though a 4-4 four -four isn't so big, it does make the warrior's life a bit harder. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we probably want another turn of setup anyway, or even two with the Krabatoa available. Mm -hmm. uh, on turn six uh, for the the next uh, the next shadow so or the the conscience yeah and I like this play from McBanderface that he is considering playing the axe here is not something a lot of people might do but it does set up for a really powerful turn five when your turn four is pretty anemic so really heads up decision there. Now I think it's concoction time. Gleaming is pretty good pickup here. It does have to pair with that uh, destroy, but yeah, might see the hazy here or the slimy. Ooh, uh. Actually going for the bubbling concoction here, just trying to get some damage potential. Mm -hmm. Ghostly Strike available here as well. Yeah, and it's looking like with this line, uh, Memnarch's probably just gonna bank all of this, and all of these uh, zero mana discounts, and go for a real big graveyard turn. Not a bad setup here, so it does look like Kravito is probably not coming down next turn. Sunfury Champion, Anima Extractor. I mean, these are some big threats here mm -hmm. with the Embers. Uh, yeah, what a setup, like you were saying, from McBanter with that axe. Yeah, absolutely huge. Plus the light pickup, clear the oh. board. Oh, and the Olgra. All these minions have pseudo charge that are picking up these buffs, which is just crazy. So we'll see how Memnarch responds. But in the meantime, I've uh, been hearing from my guys in the booth right now, and uh, apparently, uh, Lotus uh, Lotus Knight has picked up a 1 0 lead in his match right now. Oh. So taking it. Taking the lead over not Bamity, so there there could be a decision had here uh, if, if uh, you know, or we will have a decision here at the end of the hour on who's winning this series. Yeah, wow, all the pro series happening live here in front of you, so stay tuned, keep watching, keep your eyes on your screen, get in the chat. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking is going to happen here, Mick Banter? With a nice setup, as we said, Memnarch though, got the fighting got the back has the answer. Gonna have a big ghost here as well. Yeah, but uh, is the ghost big enough to beat this Olgra? Yeah. Looks like looks like that's a no. Maybe. Oh no, it's not gonna be. Olgra is gonna clean this up. Just sickening. <laughs> large and in charge. She's very large. Ouch. Yep. And even more buffs there, and 
looking like uh, Memnarch is getting left in the dust by that absolutely flawless setup from McBanterface on five. Ooh. Not That's sure. Uh, not going to be doing it here. Yeah. yeah. It's barely not good enough. And uh, I think uh, Memnarch is taking the honorable way out. Nope. All right. Well, and, uh, from, and, uh, those guys in the booth are now saying it is 2-0 in favor of Lotus Knight over... Not wow, that are. was they're, a they're, quick they're... update here. Yeah, things are happening. They're playing Marvel Snap. I don't know. I don't know what they're what they're doing. Is that allowed, Saku? It is. You can have uh, you can have two two types of games going at once. Why not? Yeah, that is uh, that is some speedball. Oof. So, uh, Hearthstone right, wow. Blitz must be the new twist mode that I haven't heard about. Yeah. There. So Lotus up two zero right now. Now Banter up one zero. Suddenly the point difference is flipped here 11 to 10 if we're just counting the points as they're being added here now brushy tuna takes the lead with that one still gonna need to win these matches but the points are now neck and neck All right and uh now it's a little bit of a role reversal we have a banter face on the rogue and memnarch this time on the warrior Yeah, switching it up here. Let's see if the same result is going to happen. It's going to take some good setup there for yeah. Memnarch, but does have a nice curve here. Yeah, and Memnarch's hand has all the stuff you want to do as the warrior. The foul egg, the anima extractor, jam session as well. Just uh, just Nimbute Axe away, and unfortunately, McBanterface just has none of it. So, uh, yeah, McBanter, not what you want to be seeing here. Takes a little bit of a risk there using the fan, but I think it was a necessary one to try and just find some way to combat the start and potion belt really is what McBanter face is looking for you yeah absolutely see. finally finding something uh, but we do have the axe on the other side there for memnarch to to start uh potentially in some threats as well on the other side definitely and McBanter face might be mulling over whether to prep this and maybe try to get some tempo going but instead he's gonna hold back gleaming that's the one Gleaming. Yeah, that's a uh, that is really really clutch. Yes, yeah, suddenly we are back in action here for McBanterface. Gleaming concoction, the double gleaming, an option. Oh, oh fitting rhymes here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday night bars. All right. Oh, wow. Double Sun Fury jam session, anyone? Oh, no. He's going to save the coin. Memnarch's going to be responsible. I think doing both to make a really huge treasure guard would have been not very good, but very funny. So, a little sad we didn't get to see it. But, instead, get to see some cards get drawn. Yeah, lots of cards getting drawn, indeed. Any of the cards we're really looking for. I mean, there's the graveyard. Probably not going to see it this turn. I think we want to try to get... Is there a way to get these stenographers, though? I don't know that we have a way. Shadow step? No, unlucky. Got to take the queen here, I'd assume. At least at this situation, you need mm -hmm. to make some sort of comeback. I would guess it's going to be the queen, Ashara, and the potion belt. Maybe the Krabatoa instead, but you need some sort of board swing soon, and spinning wheels with Gone Fishing just won't do it. Yeah, I think the decision here between the Krabatoa and the Queen does end up going with the Queen of Shara. 
Wow. Concoctor yeah. with the shadow yep. step here. We are going to be able to yeah, get these uh, get these stenographers online. Yep. And, you know, while the gas is being spent for Graveyard, this is so important to, you know, get this Anima Extractor off the board as well as this Champion and start to try to get the situation under control. That is a big treasure guard, as we said, but is it really enough here? Um, well, having our caster vision, we know that it won't be, but Sun Fury Champion, also pretty large. And uh, it might just be simple as imbued axe with some trades and seeing where things go next. But yeah, suddenly, you know, the shoe is on the other foot. It looked like Memnarch's hand was so good and his banter faces was not. And, you know, now at this point, it seems really hard to imagine McBanter face losing this game. Yeah, really powerful swing there, getting both those stenographers online. All those concoctions in hand as well. And the Ashara uh, mm -hmm. starting to, to get online here. Yeah. Pretty amazing that you can talk about all the great cards in a rogue's hand, and there's a graveyard <laughs> in there, and it doesn't come up. And uh, Memnarch is putting his chips on the table. He's all in. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind it here. Really has to, to potentially commit with uh, what we've been seeing and, and just the amount of, of, like, just value in the hand for banter. We're down to two cards here for Memnarch. Uh, really no way to, to get new ones currently, and uh, it's going to have to... These, these cards are going to have to do a lot of work. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, with that, uh, last update from the booth, uh, Lotus has swept, not Bamity. Three wow. So it's done. Uh, these uh, what, whatever game they are playing, I I don't know, but they Lotus won three of them. So <laughs> yeah, McBanner face lightning fast. <laughs> they managed. It feels like to finish their series within that first game. Yeah. Uh, and I I don't think Banter and Memnark are playing particularly slow either. Uh, <laughs> anyway. That does mean that now it is down to this match. This is the decider here for the Pro Series Finals. The winner here will win it for their team. Brushy Tuna now with the lead here at 12 to 10. Well, 12 to, yeah, 12 to 10 right now. Yep, and I like this choice for McBannerface. Uh, we're going to see the huge graveyard turn on six at this point, I think. Ooh. Really interesting. All right, it's gonna be a very big graveyard turn. <laughs> yeah, not exactly what you want to see from Memnark. Just, guess gonna sanguine depths this and try to. I don't know. <laughs> don't really know. Make a big thing. Hope that it's enough. Yep. Just pray that those dreadful concoctions don't exist. Yeah. It's going to be a, a wish that will not be fulfilled today. That it will not be. And future side means there could be even more. Going to be a glut of value here. Yeah, banter at a just, <laughs> just a plethora of options here. Almost too many to even really think about what the best play is. I feel like there's quite a few different directions you could go. Definitely, I think for if you're the rogue player, the best thing you can do is start doing things. Yes. And, Potion uh, belt gonna be the first thing. Doesn't want to duplicate that uh, dreadful. Did already have the removal for that one minion. Another dreadful though could come down. You know they're running out of stuff, so just removing any threats. Instead, yeah. saying gleaming is even better. Let's get cards. I want cards. That, yeah, that he does. And there's demise and crazy hand here. Oh boy. Wow. 
off we go. Yeah, I think we're going to be able to do everything. We said we had a lot of options, and we pretty much could do most of those things uh, just there with that pickup. Could go even bigger, but 6-6 six, six is going to be enough here. Yeah, and he just saves the gas for next turn to keep going. Seems like Memnarch is a little bit frustrated there. Might have had some better trades to do, but... Just, just a really, really uphill position from the Warrior. Yeah, certainly not where you want to be. I, I, I hope that they don't also, haven't heard about the other match, but odds are their teams might have let them know. Just the stakes just got even higher here for both these these players, especially for, for Mem Memnarch, who... Potentially was, you know, had not Bamity to, to rely on if, if uh, they're una unable to get the win here. But now, down to both players tr having to win this for their teams. Both teams fighting so hard here for the victory. Uh, and right now, McBanter really, really clutching it out here, making it very difficult for Memnarch to come back. Embers of Strength, uh, I mean, that'll slow things down a little bit, but it's not, it's not really going to be what you're looking for it's not going to be enough yeah and you have to be a little bit frustrated by this neophyte if you're memnar because normally the card is not that impactful in this matchup right. and you know it just actually actually ruined this turn for memnar because uh cannot play yeah. the bridge riff and embers together anymore yeah that would have been nice something to do instead just going for the embers slow down the game Wretch can come out as well, but uh, depends on, on what we want to do here. Could, depends, I guess, on where the Sanguine Depths wants to go as well. Yeah, I think clearing off the Ashara seems pretty reasonable. I think I like doing this, hitting the Neophyte, and then cleaning up the Ashara or the Six Drop, but going to save the Axe for something. Yeah, I think saying, you know, my axe is, is really my last chance here. If I can get any board and, and try to, you know, buff it with this axe, maybe I have a shot. But right now, yeah. it is looking more and more difficult with each passing turn. Horn of the Ancients comes down. Crab a toe, why not? All right, and two Colossals. Mm, oh, good ones. those are, are some fact, good ones. The good ones. Those are indeed the good ones. Yeah, I mean, I just like sending the Putricide and the Kravitoa here. I don't, I don't think Memnarch makes it past that. That because you can even follow that up with Behemoth if you want, but there's not even a point. You can do this, have that door all infused. Just so, so good. Yeah, it's saying Behemoth too. Why not? Yeah, we've got the rare uh, slight misorder there for the banner face, but who cares? <laughs> At who this point, cares? I think I think <laughs> he knows that making sure you get all of the plays out there are what matters, and Warrior doesn't come back from this one. Right. Uh, well, not. I'm not seeing it here. Yep. Nope. Memnarch yeah. not seeing it either, and that is now 2-0 here for McBanter. Memnarch has to sweep this Demon Hunter for a shot for the title. It's going to be tough. Is there a chance? I mean, we have Warrior Rogue and then that Demon Hunter uh, mirror that we're going to have to face. So are we going to see the Demon Hunter first? No. Going to go for the Warrior. Just going to try to get the wins as much as possible. Is there a way? I'm trying to think. So I think just whoever wins this wins it. There's no point thing 
that can change that result at this point. We are at yeah, 12 to 10 going into this. If Memnar gets the reverse, it will be 14 to 14. But Brushy Tuna would have three of the match wins. Yeah, so has to has to win this has to completely win this either side yeah, could be the final game here yeah and a true grandmaster in action uh if Bannerface has drawn at least a couple of those high mulligan win rate cards on turn one so things are looking up but i think memnarch might see a line to combat this start i really like what he's cooking over there this uh anima extractor on the coin into the jam session on two might actually be something but seems like he decided to hold back now the damage starts and the cards are getting drawn Face selects to keep the flexibility on the soul and just push the one. And uh Nark is just gonna keep drawing cards. Double X pulled here. Yeah. Really surprising to me that he hasn't tried to get on board at all, but I can say honestly that I'm not an expert in you know this new spell Demon Hunter and its matchup, so Maybe there's a chance Memnark, Memnark knows something I don't and has some sort of other plan. Yeah, you'd think maybe fighting for that early board could potentially leverage a win, but maybe you know there's just enough of that heal that, I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe you just need to develop a big, big board that they just can't get through mm -hmm. very easily. Yeah, from each... It might be just that one combo turn with the extractor. There's Olgra. Probably will see this big Thorbalor. A four mana seven seven Mayanadon. Can you believe it? Oh wow, remember the days. I do. <laughs> four mana seven seven. This one's got rush. This yeah, one's I got a, a dormant death row. This one's pretty good. If you're on chat in chat right now, please go to Reddit and complain about this card would really make my day and make it feel like old times. But, right. Let's see how Banner wants to respond. Is it ever a sent Faldori Warband face? Looks no. like a Fal Faldori Warband trade is actually in order here. It does not want to take the damage. Oh boy, we have our favorite bug here. Tokens have been summoned, so... uh Looks like McBanterface, his game has crashed. <laughs> so, I did we'll not, just wait here. Love that. I did not know that happened. It hasn't happened to me, so it's... Yeah, it's a, it's a bug with Faldori Warband and security. It's uh, very fun. So we should contact her... Uh, her stone community manager? Yeah, perhaps an associate community manager? Maybe? Yeah. Might have the right headgear to deal with the situation. Who knows? Could be anybody. Lots of good options here for McBannerface. Uh, damage and draw, damage, or also damage. So uh, we will see uh, which one he chooses. Goes for the zero mana efficient damage or the you know four mana slow damage. I think I'm partial to the chaos strike, but lots of good answers here and uh it's the metamorphosis so big damage is the key yeah i i, I like some damage i can get yeah. on board with damage yeah i think uh it's smart of McBanderface to pick one of the cards in that choice that dealt damage yeah one of those one of those damage cards oh and now on the other side of things Still trying to set up these axes. Maybe, uh, are we just going to see? Um, I'm a little bit surprised by a jam session here with no backup. But it might just be to get the axe going.
Yeah, a little mana inefficient, but does infuse the axe and push some damage. Oh, that Glaive Tar. Nice pickup there. Lots and lots of burn. Yeah, lots of burn indeed. Goes for the Rhapsody. Yep. Push five. Push six. He's halfway there. Yeah, that is setting up the axes here, though. We do have... Don't Well, we don't have a, an easy taunt with the axe, so we'll be another turn before that, but could start thinking about it. Yep. We'll see if it's going to be the jam session or the extractor. The armor button. Wow. <laughs> yeah, feeling under enough threat. Going to just armor up. Not going to try to push a little bit more. Could be the difference, but we'll see. I mean, still setting up a, a potential lethal on the other side of things. Yeah, well, I think uh, Bannerface, uh, this might be the turn where he's going to be rich. So we'll see if we're gonna get that uh silver moon arcanist uh clear with these unleash fells mm -hmm. and maybe a little help from the Iladari studies yeah so memnarch holding back on that additional minion here potentially because of that swing we were just talking about it's gonna mean it's not quite as good it's still gonna be good don't get me wrong and there's the halveria as an option um, waiting, I guess, till what do we have set up with her right now? We used, I don't know. Yeah, so instead, going with the Pelerin. Yep. yep, and uh, we're gonna be rich. Back yeah, up like, to 21. I'd like some help. Yeah, seems and, good. Uh, now, uh, now Memnarch is in the danger zone, but McBannerface's biggest clear has uh, just been spent. And it looks like that armor button is uh, seeming really good now. Yeah, it could be quite a difference maker in the end. That's going to be some taunts in the way as well. Yep, jam session. Jam session to combo with the axe. Try to hit this Olgra. And uh, Memnarch has made a real tough board to answer. Yeah, we did just see that big clear with the Unleashed Felt come down, so that's not an option here. Not enough damage. Illidari studies, those are not going to do it. Is there something in the deck the Spectral Sight can find? I don't think so. Yeah. Tough crowd? I mean, you could return Thorbalor the and send, Thorbalor, it back. send a but... taunt back. Yeah, I mean it's not. It, there could there are worse things he could do. I feel like the tough crowd might be a good choice. Yeah, I think we still might be dead though. Even with the tough crowd, that axe just yeah too threatening. Well, there's another studies. There is a Felerin. There also is the possibility of angsty rhapsody plus I beam, but that's a little bit of a risk. So let's see uh, how many banner face navigates this one on, on the clock. Yeah, there is the tough crowd. What can we do along with that, though? That's going to be enough. Another study is just trying to find an answer. What can it be? Glavetar, actually. I like it. I like yeah, it a lot. I like this as well. Yeah, just reduce that damage with the axe that can come out. Yeah. Remove the, the minions available. Yeah, and Banter says, uh, you're you're coming with me if uh, I'm going down. But I think this is still lethal with the Olgra. Yeah, so. the Olgra is going to be, what, uh... Six, six damage here. Goes to face six, six plus, plus seven nine. plus two. Yeah, that's no, that's it's, that's it's more it's ample damage because of the axe. Is because of the axe, yeah, it's more than enough. So, and that is going to be the first win there for Memnarch, a crucial one. 
The warrior gets through, still needing to beat that DH two more times, but are we going to see the rogue, or is it time for the mirror? What do you think is the more difficult one to get through, or, or is it just it's all... You're all in here. You need to win with everything here for Memnarch. Well, you got to win with it all, so, you know, that, that will play a role in it, but I will say that the mirror is definitely the easier matchup than the rogue one, so... We'll see if Memnarch has the mentality of, I'm going to do the hard one first. I'm going to end my night early, as early as I can. Or, you know, I want to take this to game five. And, well, it looks like Memnarch uh, wants to uh, get it over with. And uh, see if the rogue is going to get their scam or not. And so far, so good. That's an Ashara and a prep. And he sends it away. I don't know Hearthstone anymore. We don't want it. We don't want it. Well, we'll see. Did Memnarch just mulligan away a pro, a pro championship? Or are these casters washed? Uh, let us Find know out next time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Do I make could a poll? <laughs> Do I make a poll in, in <laughs> chat to see what happens? Could be, could be a combination, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> that extra unleash fell pickup though is quite significant. See, Mem knew what he was doing. Look. Yeah. Yeah, she's back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so banter just uh, playing the game so far. Nothing too too uh, complicated just yet. Here's an interesting choice here for Memnark, and it looks like the Putridite is coming down, just saying, what are you going to do to deal with this? Uh, and I want some tempo. I want to get things moving. Yep, the Putricide is a really interesting one. Mark of Scorn, though, is like the perfect pickup, but... It is actually just very into annoying into so much stuff. And uh, it's Warband in time. Yeah, instead of uh, going for the Marcus Scorn, doesn't uh, want to risk a potential uh, minion pickup. Yeah, but that wants uh, to remove the nice. future side. Yeah. Real nice. Oh, oh uh oh. I Wait a, a minute. Fan. I, I've seen this movie before. That's a Shadow of Demise and a Queen of Shara. Hold yeah, on just, just a second. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps a good setup here. We have the fan, which I imagine is coming out already. Serrated bone spike. Why not? Oh, we're just going going after it now. And we're, we don't even care. Uh, hold on. Yeah, whatever. Those one ones, who cares? Yeah. I mean, Let's just a... get this online a turn before. I like that. Yeah. I mean, you you make see colossal, make colossal, and uh, you just keep doing it until McBanterface dies. This is a. Sm I like the line. All right. And uh, oh, uh, more <laughs> again. Yep. More we... more minions have been spawned. More rushers are here. Yeah, we, we got away with the last Vildori Warband, but it turns out on turn four, you we can't Don't always. get two in a game. You get one, if you're lucky. And we're back. And we're back. Super Chicken saying, probably not a crash, but having to restart to make the minions visible. That's also... Yeah, well, really timely that it's happening at the same time on stream as it is in real time. That's yeah, a, I know. That's a We've had it happen a couple times <laughs> already, so. Um, yeah. uh, oh, we're not going to What? Mourn. Memnark, Memnark. Hold Memnark. on. Memnark. We, come, come, we did all this sir, setup. What is sir, happening? Sure. Okay, maybe he just wants to play them both at once. Oh. That's a Giga, Why? That's a giga okay. thing. That is a Gigafin. Not so good in this matchup, but it is it, stats. 11-11 for one. We were just complaining about a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. I'll, I'll take that. It is It is a pile of stats, so I'll give you that. I would have liked to play that pile of stats last turn, though, if we were going to... I concur. I actually don't like to develop both things at once in this matchup, but it's uh, Kravitoa. 
Okay. Krabatoa, that's a good one. Yeah, also not that great here, but... No, not great here, but it is a good one. Are we really... Are we going to hold on to this Gigafin? I, I just... We don't have enough minions on the other side to really warrant caring about that. I just want stats. Yeah, absolutely. Put it down. Yeah, and then play the Potion Belt, maybe. Yeah. Or... Memnark, really think this one out. Uh, considering all options... Yeah, here here he comes. Mm. It's a hazy. Oh, we're going slimy, and yeah, I like that. Yep. All right, and. Presented with one colossal, uh, Bannerface has got to choose. Dispose and going down swinging deals with this very nicely in conjunction with the I beam, but so does uh, three unleash fells. <laughs> I don't think that's quite as good, but it's really funny. Yeah, I mean, I like the dispose in the the silver moon, or excuse me, the the going down swinging. But yeah, I think McFander face yeah. does not want to part with these unleashed fells. He also reasonably could pass here. Yeah, it's a weird. It sounds weird, but like no, I'm not. I'm not opposed. It does mean that the I beam is kind of unless we we just use only the I beam here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean... And one of the fells. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I feel like trying to force Memnar to develop is smart. Just like a pr really, really delicate situation, that balance of, you know, using the removal for tempo versus holding it back. Yeah, not the best three drop. Uh, <laughs> not, not the best one to... As far as what you're looking for, yeah. Um, Krabato again. Are we gonna commit to this big board instead? Going for the, the Pazic here. Yeah, I like that choice. Yeah. Then maybe you just do a concoctor or door of shadows. Yep, concoctor. Some damage found. And uh, now it's time to go down swinging. Sugar, we are going down swinging. Did you know though that it's gonna pull the audio bot out of the deck if that's what he put back? I really? Yep. Yeah, Pazic is messed up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I uh I know that I have tried to finley away my audio bots, dispose of the evidence, but I always get caught. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unfortunately, Audiobots are going to come down, but does remove the rest of this board here. Yeah. Get a little bit of damage in as well. Yeah, and... Uh... Oh, yeah, how does it work here? They don't they don't get get attacked, right? They spawn after the... Yeah, they, they don't yeah. believe they get attacked. Yeah. So. But, yeah, now uh, Memnarch's life total is starting to look a little low, and it's just a bit more of that burn from cards like Glaivetar... Or the scythe that can just close this out. Oh, Astalor though, looking for that heal, does have a bunch of shadow steps, so eventually we'll be able to Astalor some health here. Yeah, gonna even just shadow step the the two cost one. Just yeah. get some more protectors in the hand. Push a little bit though, of damage. Those three cards are exactly Reno Jackson here for McBanter face and Yeah. I don't know. We'll see if uh, Memnark is heads up to pl enough to play around it. Oh, Krabato would be playing right into it here. Yeah. Uh-oh. YOLO. And the stenographer that is saying, I am all in. Memnark saying, what are your, your three cards can't possibly be the Arcanist and the Double Fell here. Yeah. Uh, only needs really the one. It. 
Well, yeah. Remix oh. Rhapsody. Emo Rhapsody. Oh, man, that goes face. Uh, is it ever the Emo Rhapsody in one of the fells? Yeah, I don't mind that either. I guess you fell I think it's first. Still both, I think it's still both fells here, but uh, it's so awkward. I don't know. That's quite a lot of heal with just the one fell in the in the emo rhapsody. I, I kind of like it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a tough tough spot here, but I think uh, banter is gonna banter. go for the double fell. Yeah, just saying. I'm not gonna risk it at all. I can clear this. I can heal so much. Yep, uh, we're gonna be rich. But uh, double Astalor next turn is uh is big game here for uh, Memnarch to just outlast it. Yeah, outlast and then have the follow up eventually with the Flamebringer to just finish the game. Yeah. So it's, uh, oh, yeah. Back up to 13. Oh, really, really, really bad situation here for McBannerface. Security's yeah, gotta there's... get held. It's just a question of whether Resounding Rhapsody ever gets spent. And I think it's a hero power pass. But yeah, I think so. Can't be thrilled about that. Definitely not. And you know there's 14 damage coming down next turn, probably. Yeah, I mean, really, though, I think uh, if you're Memnarch... Uh, you might just armor up again? Yeah, it really depends on how much pressure he can put on, because... Yeah, because, like, pretty much it's McBannerface. If he plays the big Astalor, is there any room for McBannerface to kill him? And I think the answer is yes, so... I... It's a, it's a tight one. Yeah, there might be just enough room. We know we, we're... Uh, we got the wraps. Whoa! Wow. Wow, indeed. Door of Shadows finds the Ghostly Strike. Yeah, this is that decision point. Are we going to play the Protector here? One last Protector before we, we just go on this Flamebringer. Oh, now with the Shadow Step. Double Protector seems pretty wild. Yeah, I think... Uh... It might just be the game if you double protect your hair. You've got four flame bringers. Yeah, you've I got think the it's... health. Yeah, I think you want to try and set up a two turn, but it's it's really tempting to just at least heal up to fifteen. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's an alternative line where the stenographer gets played, but nope. Just stealing all the way up. Uh, Memnarch has a Reno of his own. And... Marcus Gorn. Beast of Souls! McBannerface is back in the game. Yeah, wow. What a pickup. That is crucial. Yeah, the minions are invisible, but uh, not bothered. And he hits the damage, so... Yeah, that is gonna certainly help things along. Is it gonna be enough, though? We have got Flamebringer coming down. Another one right behind it. The and setup is there. One. Is and there... One. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna come down to those. <laughs> but certainly has the option. Ooh, that is a big pickup. Spectral Sight. How much I damage beam? can we get here? I beam. Yeah, that's right. Mm -mm. That's a Felerin and a Halveria left to pick. Old Dari going to come down here. What outcast card could it be? Another I Beam. Just try to heal out of range and hope you get another turn. No, I think you gotta try to do both, and yeah. it seems like the 
just really awkward. Yeah, how did, how do you do this here? Hmm. Okay, what do we get? That's the one. At least that uh, is. At least to give him one more chance. And it's a chaos strike. That's pretty good. Yeah, still alive here. I think it's just do the play again. <laughs> and uh just hope that they don't have ten damage here. Could come down to this turn. Where is the pickup? The glaive tar. Yep. Up. Oh. Getting close. That's some oh. mana utilized though. Are we oh this oh, oh my no. gosh! Oh, 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 no. oh no! Unbelievable! Oh. Finds the exact lethal there. Oh my god! And that is gonna do it. McBanter with the clutch there. Memnark almost able to stabilize and come back. Almost able to take us to that game five, but that is gonna be it. And that means that Brushy Tuna is our champion for the pro series this season season 12 amazing wow what a way to end it there i thought we were going to game five but banter able to find exact lethal right at the last moment perfect mana perfect execution and memnarch just sitting there with astalors in hand plenty of damage available but just not enough time Whew. Yeah, just uh, double-checking with McBanter to see if they're able to uh, jump on with us for a quick minute while I chit-chat with Super Chicken and Infinite, who are going to be the next match coming up for the Legacy Series. I haven't heard back yet, but... Okay, he said sure, so... Here we go. The anticipation. MBF is here. How you doing, McManter Face? Congrats on the win tonight, and congrats on the finals. Thank you. You guys hear me okay? Again. Yeah. Yep. You sound great. Absolutely. Wow. Well, well done there. Really nice play. Some very tight lines there, especially that last game there. Razor thin edge. Really close. Uh, I thought Memnark was going to start coming back, but you were able to, to find that out and find the exact lethal there at the end. First of all, how does it feel getting the win there in a clutch situation for your team and uh, to get it in such a fashion? Uh, it's definitely nice. I mean, I, I've been playing with uh, the same team for a few seasons now. I'm not sure exactly how many, but it felt like every season we uh, we got to the finals and then we always fell short. So it's good to finally uh, finally get a win. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious uh, if during your match, did you get any any updates on that? I know that the Lotus versus not uh, Bamity match was happening kind of simultaneously. They were very quick, but uh, oh, yeah. did you get uh, an update during your match? I know it was always for you, uh, uh, you know, needing to win that matchup, but um, did that give you any motivation? Did you hear anything about Lotus getting that sweep uh, yeah. you know, pretty early in your match? I, I think they finished their match during like game one <laughs> or maybe like as you're hitting into game two i was like okay yeah. that was quick so yeah but i mean i i knew i needed to win anyway so it didn't like really change a ton but you know it's at least we know it's the decider match so gotta win it yeah and plus you were coming in here with what was almost a mirror too just some slight differences <laughs> in the rogue decks but otherwise uh you know, card for card, you guys were pretty similar. Uh, you feel yeah. more comfortable with that sort of setup or something where you have some wildly asymmetrical decks? Uh, I mean, in general, I'm not a huge fan of, like, playing mirrors, but I'm fine with it. I mean, I played plenty of competitive matches where you know, everybody ends up bringing similar decks, so I'm used to it. It's not, like, my favorite way to play Hearthstone, but... uh. Yeah, you can't really complain. So it was fine. Sure. 
Wait, um, I guess that's that's a nice win there, uh, of course, for you and, and for your team getting that. Um, I, I don't know. what. How do the rules work? Can Arhat play in, in this anymore? What's the – I know this was potentially last he's, season. He's but unallowed. Yep. Unallowed, <laughs> yeah. So getting a win there for Arhat in, in his final season, yeah. now he's working for the man. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, we, we mentioned in our uh... – in our discord i think ron said that you know we, we had to send a uh, hat off with the championship because again we kind of fell just short in all the other uh recent seasons so as good of a time as any to do it so so is the takeaway here that it took a member of the team becoming a blizzard employee and perhaps some other stuff to get you guys a win or is that, that the wrong is, message no that's actually exactly the message all the draws were rigged uh it was all scripted. Yeah. <laughs> there, you heard it here, first, folks. I love it. All there right. You have it. Hat rigged the game. Or, sorry, the community, the Hearthstone community manager rigged the game. So. Already abusing that power. <laughs> love to see it. Thanks again, McVanterface, for, for joining us, and uh, congrats on, on winning the finals. Of course. Thank you. See you guys. Take care. See you around. Take care. Have a great night. Wow. All right. Finals. Check. Got the dub for our hat on the send off. Sorry for cheese to cheese monitors United. Really well fought battle there. Came down to the wire. Memnark, don't feel bad. That was a tough match. Really well played. Uh, you know, and and uh your team did it did a great job. First loss, I believe, on the season there, so or maybe one loss on the season. I can't tell which one's the tie column, which one's the, the loss. But anyway, <laughs> really, really good season there for Cheesemongers United, making it all the way to the finals. Uh, but congratulations once again to Brushy Tuna. And now we have that final match of the night here. Turning back straight to that Legacy Series we started off with tonight. Currently, that matchup 7-10 to 10 after that match we saw earlier. Oops, all Justin needing a win here. Uh, AJT versus Neji are holding off until we find out the result of this upcoming match. We have Infinite versus Super Chicken. How we feeling? Cool. I'm excited to see this one. Uh, really, uh... Really not sure what to make of these classes. I'm just pulling it up now, and we've got Infinite, Demon Hunter, Priest, Rogue, and Warrior against same lineup from Super Chicken. Yeah. So, be a tilt, and Infinite's on that tear going six zero this season. So, see if uh, he can stay undefeated. Do you guys want to know bands? Sure, I would Hit love. Us. I would love it. So it's just gonna be. Demon Hunter, Rogue, and Warrior are all banned for both sides, and we're just dealing with a three, <laughs> three card set for Priest. <laughs> Great, Beautiful. perfect. Three days later, best, best, yes. of, <laughs> best of five series Priest mirrors only. Yes, to yeah. determine the semifinals here. Exactly. Yeah. So, for our viewers and for ourselves, uh, for sanity wise, both priests were banned. All right, so uh, just like last time, but uh, this time the uh, decks are hidden, not open list. So, uh, Myanodon, who you got? Who's your pick? Who's my pick? An exact mirror here. Potentially exact same decks, or very close to it. It might be exactly the matchup we just saw. There's a good chance we might see exactly the same decks, or very close to them. Uh, with that being said, I feel like Super Chicken is just a tenured player. I'm leaning Super Chicken, but, uh, you know, for, for fun, I, I kind of, you know, would like to see Infinite win because then we got one more match in this uh, in this series. That's true. I always love to make Justin play Hearthstone. Exactly. But, but I will say that uh, Super Chicken showed some restraint and didn't bring Paladin. So that makes me think he might be serious. and. Maybe he's going to win because of it. But uh, they're into the match now, so let's see what we got game one. Oh, wow. Let's do it. All right. Oh, I don't have infinite as a 
friend yet, but I do have Super Chicken. So for you, or for our viewers out there, Infinite is going to be the first to spectate. Uh, so bottom of your screen, and Super Chicken will be at the top. So it looks like we've got Super Chicken on the Outcast Demon Hunter going into uh, Infinite and Rage Warrior. So yeah, we'll see how this tilt goes. Yeah, looking to be outcast DH once again. Not too surprising. Also waiting here on the spectate for infinite for that warrior, but going to venture, I guess, is it's in rage warrior. All right, that would seem pretty accurate. Looks like going for that early Hawk Strider saying, you know, yep. if you can't deal with this, I'm going to start really rolling. Yeah, it's uh, the Super Chicken Special. We've seen it a lot. And, uh, wow, what an insane draw from Super Chicken. Unreal. Yeah. Just what you want to see. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate that, you know, these, uh, these embers are going to buff a minion in hand, but he is, uh, getting this Merlochula infused. Things were looking up, but Sanguine Depths could, uh, Spells the end for this Hawk Strider, which does take a little bit of the wind out of his sails. Yeah, did get some value off the Hawk Strider, though. Wouldn't be too upset with uh, the way it played out. But yeah, getting a, getting an answer here, it's going to be meaningful here for Infinite to stay in this game. All right. Well, that is a big egg. Might want to see the bump first from Infinite, but... We'll see. Uh... Yeah, that's a, that is a, a large egg. But uh, we'll see if uh, Infinite will uh, roll over easy or if uh, Super Chicken is going to be able to take this board back. Uh Yep, looks like it's uh, an effort to go wide here. Yeah, Super Chicken saying a mistake was made there. Yeah. Seemed all right. <laughs> yeah, maybe thinking he could have uh, got down a little more, but mm -hmm. maybe just, uh, you know, doing a little bit of it, making a little bit of a joke there, but... Yeah, this uh this hand from Chicken though is looking real good. So I'm excited to see what's coming off this wretched exile, because uh boy. We don't have priest in this matchup, so we need to get our discover fix somehow. Who's hiding now? I mean this seems pretty good. That it does. Oh man, he is cooking. Oh boy. <laughs> Cooking is right. You let him cook. Just thinking about the trades here. Yep. Play that spectral sight into the walloper. Yeah. I think he's going to probably go for the walloper and the left hand spectral sight, mm -hmm. would be my guess, but we'll see. Oh, goes to the one on the right. Another Walloper. All right. Smart trades here from Super Chicken. And just like that. Seems good to me. Yeah. 
Jam session, though, is a nice pickup. Uh, let's uh, infinite fight back a bit and, you know, order is a little weird, but it works out great. Gets the bridge riff off as well. And uh, what board? Okay, I still don't have uh, Infinite added as a player, unfortunately, so if Dank, Dank is turned my hand on, shoot him a quick message in between this fast match. Awesome. Yeah, I, I don't have him either. Okay. So we're going to have to be Dankist uh, reaching out sent, after. Oh, But in the meantime, uh, we don't really need to know too much about Infinite's hand because he's playing all the cards and... That's a Decimator Ogre that can come down with the Craze Wretch and even another Bridge Riff. So, Infinite's playing the cards, getting ahead, and life is good. And Super Chicken's on the back foot trying to recover after that amazing board. Infinite just mopped it up in one turn. All right, Saku, you should be added now. Okay. Don't see him yet, but... And uh, Olgra comes down and puts chicken low. We'll we'll see if there's any more gas left in the tank to stop this uh, five nine Olgra. Yeah, looking tough here, but gonna gonna look for something. Here we go. And rush the stage is not it. Yeah, definitely not what you're looking for. Uh, hmm. I know, we'll see if there is any way out. Might have to be a feller in play to try and find an I beam. Could maybe try to get go for some discover some random cards off Exile. Really, really difficult spot. Okay, so our viewers are yeah. up to date now. So, excellent. Oh, Thank does you. find security? Yeah, maybe gives them a chance to get the Merlocula in play and stabilize a little bit. But rush the stage is almost actively terrible here. Pulling these shambling. Yeah, chows. you do not yeah. want the chows right now. No. Oh, and. Uh... That's almost not quite lethal, but that Craze Wretch in hand is really going to make it tough for uh, Super Chicken. Oh no, the Verse Riff! It's back! Yeah, Verse Riff. And that'll do it. That'll do it. Infinite taking the win here in that first game. Warrior down. The Demon Hunter just not not getting there. Did have a really nice turn, but with that answer we saw, just not able to come back after that. Well, and we'll see how Super Chicken responds. And, you know, Infinite just has that uh, rogue and Demon Hunter left himself. So, we'll see. And it's going to be the rogue. I think the Demon Hunter tends to have the upper hand in this matchup, but... You know, any matchup with Miracle Rogue really puts a lot of pressure on the pilot. And, you know, at 6 and 0 this season, one can only assume that Infinite is up to task. And, you know, those are the cards you want. So, should be another. Yeah, those are definitely some good cards there on both sides. But yeah, the Rogue with some nice options here. Yeah, this is uh, definitely uh, going to be a high-powered game. Ooh. Tough crowd to play around the graveyard is really interesting. Yeah, not a bad pickup does mean that it's just going to sit in the hand for a while, which isn't too bad. Uh, do, do you have the security to go along with this uh, exile here? 
Yeah, push a lot of damage, create a card. Oh, security is back. And uh, we know, though, that there's not a clean answer here from Infinite, so uh, Super Chicken's gonna start to get some value. Yeah, going for a rush this stage does find the Fierce Outsider. Yep. And going down with the Shambling Chow, too, just saying I'm putting as much pressure as possible. This game yep. is going to be over before you can even blink. And, yeah, here we go. That's a Shadow Step. Looks like we're going to have a very big turn from Infinite. And uh, Ooh, this tough crowd is going to sting. gleaming as well here. Yeah, no bone spikes, so I think that's good news for Super Chicken. Oh, interesting. Go for the concoctor shadow step here. Yep. Give me another concoction. Give me the stenographer. Does he hit another one? Nope, it's a cult neophyte, so we know Infinite has the version that is teched for the mirror. And uh, we know that that 1010 is getting sent to the Shadow Realm. Um, yeah, that's never getting played again, but nice try. Yeah, this Murlocula gets to come down too. Another very big turn for Super Chicken, and it puts Infinite in an awkward spot. Getting just under the Krabatoa. Yeah, I'm gonna just have to go for this Concoction Hope. This three cost can do enough here. Yeah. Gone fishing as well, being hovered. Preparation. Rep. Could be pretty good. Yeah, could could potentially do something here. You see the future, future side. side. Try to go again. Infinite saying that if he has it, he has it when it comes to the glaive tar. No taunt. And uh, looks like a dreadful concoction. It is. So we'll see. Any face damage? Not uh, yet. Not yet, but that could certainly find it. It could. Just three more. There's one more. That's... Draw wall uh, Halveria. That'll do it. Oh, can't play her. But it's her. just a little too expensive. So uh, one damage off lethal. Anyone ought to a ghoul to the face? Anyone ought to a ghoul to the face? And, uh, yeah, so just making some trades, going face with what you can, and hoping this should be enough. I mean, it's going to be tough to deal with this. What is there on the other side? Door of Shadows. Bone spike? Looking no bone spike. Unlucky. Bone spike. Yeah, does not find it. Ghostly strike is found here, though. There's the bone spike. Yep. There's another bone spike as well. I mean, that's definitely what you want to see. Is it going to be enough here, though? Yeah, he's got to clear pretty much everything. Yeah, I mean, you have the dreadful as well on top of the... I don't know how... how... Yeah, that's no, not going to be enough. And Infinite sees it as well. Super Chicken able to get that return W there. And that means we're at 1-1 here. Yep, and uh, Green Paladin sneaks its way through. And uh, it's a one of <laughs> series. Should have known Super Chicken would not, uh, not agree to play the Demon Hunter with almost no minions. That's just unlike him. But picks up the big W and... Uh, yeah, tied up, so we'll see. Uh, 
I'm sure none of our viewers are watching more anxiously than uh, always just in time in Neji Boston, but maybe the Maybe they're starting to prep now that it's one to one. Uh, it could really go either way. Looks like it is going to be that warrior versus the DH here. Yeah, we're going the other way though. Yeah. This time. Roll reversal. See if the result is going to be the same though. Really thinking about this mulligan here. Infinite with a pretty strong hand. Super Chicken also with uh, some good options. We'll see if they toss away any of this, though. Yeah, Bridge Rift yep. gone. Sanguine Depths here. comes into the hand, and Infinite with the full keep. Yeah, looks like once again we're going to have another... Uh... Pretty hype game. It's that jam session right out the gate. And uh does not want to allow Infinite to have that uh Hawk Strider Rancher start that uh he had himself. Yeah, and Sanguine Dev's just coming out to remove one of these minions. Mm -hmm. I think Super Chicken recognizes that eventually, if his big enough board sticks, that he's going to win this game. So I think that's exactly the sort of situation he's going for, just trying to keep these minions off the board and getting as big as he can. Yeah, and the tempo just continues here. Yeah, Going for the Imbued Axe, actually. Yeah. And I don't mind this. It does uh, leave a big minion there, but since it dies to the Glaive Tower, I don't know if Thorbalor might have been a little cleaner. And yeah, Infinite is just doing the thing. Drawing even more cards. Yeah, now Thorbler coming down. Not a not a bad result. Looks like just trying to get as much uh, value as we can off this axe. Get at least one minion uh, buffed up each turn. Definitely. And uh, security is here. Gonna try to escort this Thor Balor out. Yeah, but what comes down alongside it? I think that's the question. Infinite just has so many cards in hand and so many options, but. It looks like hovering that shambling chow. Four is less than one, or than five, sorry. And uh, we'll see maybe the Merloculas here or next turn alongside the Rancher. No, saying I, I, I want the, the pressure this turn. I can't afford to, to give away this board. Yep. Not even going for the draw there. But holding on to the other Merlocula, it looks like. That's an Anima Extractor, but no way to get these minions going. Uh, pretty sad Olgra, so we might just see this roaring applause here to draw one. Yeah. The foul egg. A little unfortunate once again. Yeah, I need some more activators here. A lot of yeah. potential, but needs something. Yeah, it might be the extractor here alongside the egg. It'd be all the minions here, and then just try to buff up this Olgra to close it out. 
bit risky, but it's a really tough spot for Super Chicken, so he might be willing to take it. Yeah, certainly thinking about it here. If it's going to be a play, it has to start doing it fast. Might hold back. Are we going to play this foul leg, though? Looks like just the foul leg getting played. Yep, and smartly holding back the last axe hit in depth, but... Infinite's board is not getting smaller. Oh, how very, uh, huge pickup. Yeah, thinking about the Halveria here. Let's it rip. And really pump up these minions. Yeah, I guess what's the uh, way Since... to do this? So I feel like it's Halveria yeah. hits their initiate goes face and then yep. maybe trade the two one in. But... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, going for a little bit more value. This does this does take a risk here with any sort of AOE. I maybe would have liked to see the other trade, but yeah, well, fortunately though for Infinite, uh, Super Chicken has not drawn anything. So. Yep. Real, real tough break. A little bit of a weird choice there. Yeah, but... why why that one and not the Merlocula if we're going to do that? I can't really say. But, uh... Oh, I no. Think... I think it looks pretty good for Infinite now. Just slam down everything he can and send it face. Yeah, Ogre being gone. Now double Rancher, it looks like. Yeah, and he's going to be able to get a wall of Herodophus as well. Just an absolutely massive board swing. Oh, boy. And uh, maybe that will save him for one more turn, but... Yeah, the, we'll have the Chorus Rift back again. I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, it doesn't look like it is, though. It's the damage out of hand that we see. Uh, I think Super Chicken is going to be going to uh, Game 4. Yeah, it looks like game four indeed, and, and just the rogue left there for infinite. Yep. And uh, that rogue does have a favored matchup into the warrior, so... Seems uh, pretty likely that infinite will uh, be able to find a way through, but... Just a really, really unfortunate drop of Super Chicken, and... That fire spell just never came. Infinite miss lethal. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wow. That was a uh, really technically something. not over. I don't think it's gonna make a difference here, but yeah, yeah. super chicken will just give up. But uh, yeah. Well, that one damage to the face was missed. I don't think infinite missed any mental damage and. You know, that's going <laughs> to be really tough for Super Chicken to uh, kind of buckle down and recover from that and focus up on winning this game four. Rogue left for infinite? Yep. Yep. The Rogue for infinite and the warrior for super chicken and the rogue 
Yeah, are we going to see that mirror here? Just trying to get the win there and, and the warrior last? Or no, just wants to get the warrior through here. Super Chicken saying, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to get the win before you can do anything. That's a couple of good cards there for Infinite, though, to start. Yeah. And a couple on the other side, though, for Super Chicken as well. Yeah. Should be, uh, once again, another great game. But uh, they got to keep drawing those cards. Oh, my God. Infinite hit the graveyard. He's... He's on another level. Right? I like this extractor play. Knowing you have the other one and making it a little bit awkward for Infinite to clear it while developing his curve the way he'd like to, and... Yeah, an infinite just saying, okay, you, you have me there. I don't want to have to hear a power or use this ghostly strike here. Yeah, it's a coin jam session time, baby. This Thorbalor is going to be so big. Yeah, this is going to be... No, oh, it no. looks like we're he, going... Super Chicken is a coward, smartly playing around the dreadful concoction and resisting the urge to hand buff one minion to astronomical levels. But uh, looks like we're going to have a big graveyard here. That first concoction is free, so... Yeah, there's a lot that can be done here. So yeah, going to start off with that, that prep con uh, potion belt. Does there's get the gleaming. And another, another gleaming. Gone fishing is well available to just add more draw. Shadow yeah. step. Anything to play with that. We do have the future side. Not really. Ooh, serrated bone spike. Double bone spike. This is going to be a very big uh, ghost here. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Oh, interesting. I think so Infinite has decided next turn's going to be the one. No, no he, he's, 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 he's just doing the thing. Now. He's fine. Okay. It's he still can good. play the future side. <laughs> still play the stenographer. Yeah, the stenographer pull was quite good there to be able to, to finish that off, get a really big graveyard going. Yeah. And <laughs> if you're a Super Chicken fan, uh, this one can't make you happy. At least Thorbalor can come back and take out Putricide, right? There's there's that. Yeah, that's something. Looking at a tent and can't make you feel good. I I would agree with that. Might be thinking of a line where he clears this ten ten this turn with but with uh, the embers and the jam session to keep reviving the Thorbalor, but I think if you're super chicken, your biggest priority is taking out this putricide and trying to establish board in some way and force the rogue to answer it. Can you do both? If you jam session, trade, and then embers... Yeah, you can do both. You can clear it, but you're going to give him a lot of concoctions. Yeah. Wow, he's leaving the putricide. Yeah. Nope. Okay, he gets the ordering right there. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the best he's got, trying to make this Remornia be a game winner. Do Shadow of Demise. Oh boy, yeah. Gonna use one of those bone spikes here. Another gleaming. Another gleaming Dreadful goes maybe for there. the hazy. hazy. Ooh. I'm tired of all my own cards. Let me get something else. All right, going for the, the copy of the Potion Belt here. Dreadful this time, and another Dreadful. Yep. Double Dreadful. Okay, yeah. Wow. 
Oh, these are just these cards are just not it for Super Chicken tonight. Might have to use one of these verse rifts yeah. just to clear off this ten five. I think it it is gonna have to come down this turn, and you don't love it, but you do have the the Remornia getting set up. You have the Embers next turn. Yeah, I mean, you could Embers now to get worst. this. Or Balor just back on the board, or even use Embers to clear, but it's so much more resource intensive. Oh, we're gonna triple verse rift. Is that? Oh. Yeah, he's uh. He's versing it up, trying to protect this egg. Egg is the savior. And now a big uh, ghost is going to come down once again. Yep. And convincing, convincing disguise. disguise. We'll see. Maybe Infinite will uh, take this turn off when it comes to the graveyard, but... Yeah, might might just be a wait turn, but still a lot... Uh, with both yeah, bone spikes spike. and the demise, yeah, maybe it is just going to be the... The ghost coming down here is like a 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven or something. Yeah, might like to see the Neophyte here over the Astalore, but we'll see how Infinite decides. And it is the Neophyte. And it uh, looks like uh, the Convincing Disguise is going to come down on this ghost. Oh, and... <laughs> no, God. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. Wow. Oh, I don't think Super Chicken could have played around that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Chicken couldn't have predicted that they were going to get a Convincing Disguise, make a 6-6 six, six Haunted Conscience, and then... Convincing disguise it into the blood, blood berserker. Yeah, I mean, we're disappointed. Sim in you. Simple stuff. <laughs> All right, so my anodon, I need you to be honest with me. You were you were reading that off the card, right? There's no way you knew that card's name. <laughs> oh, I hundred percent was reading it off the card. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Blight blood berserker. I mean, it's fun to say, but not one to remember. It's not fun when it's on the other board on uh, turn six. And they have a full hand of gas, and boy. Super Chicken is a trooper for sticking this one out. It's for the yeah, content. Remor Remornia is here to save. I don't know if we'll see Remornia or the Bridge Riff with the Embers of Strength this turn. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and maybe we even see the Roaring Applause? Did draw three ever be a solution? Chicken's fighting back! Yeah, definitely fighting back. Has the big Remornia to maybe able to do something here soon right now though uh, it's looking like it was all infinite does have that double uh, dreadful concoction there double hazy though uh at this rate oy, oy, oy. <laughs> or below of his own i can't believe it oh, yeah. Not another another graveyard spells, wait though. a second <laughs> oh boy Where is it going? Ooh. Of course. Yep. Yeah. All the cards, all the time. Yeah, this Remornia is going to have to put in overtime here. Yeah, not looking like enough. 
and I think it is going to be Infinite taking this one, and that does mean for AJT and Neji watching. Looks like you're going to have to play this one out. Well, we're seeing some card draw at least. Oh, Embers, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think uh I think there's a chance here that uh Super Chicken yeah, yeah, still, is living. Still in it. I mean trade embers, you could like got the sanguine you can clear off the Astalor again. Yeah, I think you can also clear the four one into three two doing it this way. So chicken spots that. Yeah. And yeah, it seems like yeah, uh go. he's he's gonna have another lease on life. Yeah, not too long, though, that Flamebringer in the hand is going to be quite a threat. Yeah. He's but still fishing. alive right now. Gone yep. fishing. Ooh. Yeah. Take the Queen of Shara. Makes sense. Get the Krabatoa. And uh, that'll... that'll yeah, Krabatoa is just... Is lethal. Yeah, it's lethal. That'll do it. And that will be the series there for Infinite taking the match. And that does mean Oops All Justin now in the lead. Or actually, it's tied, I believe, now. 11 11 with that 3 1 win there for Infinite. That is 11 11 now. It is coming down to AJT versus Neji for, in, for that final match here in that series to win it all, starting essentially from nothing. 11-11, totally tied up, comes down to who wins it, doesn't matter the points. Uh, wow, what a way to, to get here in the Legacy Series semifinals. Both players here, really great season. 6-1 for Super Chicken, 6-0 for Infinite. Played yeah. their heart out here. Super Chicken getting a little tough, tougher draws, and uh, Infinite really finding some good outs and, and good good damage there to, to take those wins absolutely and you know miss lethal schmeeple with the win <laughs> and you know sometimes when you have a board with all those stats that life lead that hand size lead you can you can afford to miss one if the rest is going so well and you know jokes aside though infinite played very very well play on the warrior super clean especially you know it just was a great showing and uh, we'll see if he can hold on and go for 8-0 and next week. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Infinite had to go because they have to work early tomorrow morning. So they, they said thanks for letting them be on stream and great win for his team. So Yeah, congratulations yeah. to him. And imagine having to uh, work early and not be here. Couldn't be me, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just uh, doing a quick sweep um, for THL here. So those who uh, didn't know, Hero Series was uh, already decided today. Um, so I got to see Let Them Cook take take the win, 15-11 uh, over Dola. So um, what else was already decided? Pro Series, as we've it was streamed already, so that's... Thanks to Lotus Knight uh, being wonderful and, and having a, what was it called, a side-by-side -side, uh, kind of match with uh, Memnark and uh, McBanterface. So, uh, Legacy Series, we can see uh, Albatross' is play Mistakes uh, versus Tobias taking them down 14-8. to eight. So, we're going to see... What the results are going to be with the S24 versus Oops All Justin between the two one seeds. So we'll see next week who will be the Legacy Series champion. So um, also decided, I think, for Wild. Yeah, F2L taking the Wild dub. Yep. Big 12 and 2. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I was on the other side of that beat. <laughs> but uh, 
you know, good for F2L. Was uh was a good series and yeah, yep. very deserving win from you guys. Yep, and those that uh, didn't catch the trio series on Thursday night, that was decided too. So Dankus, Dad, I think you're involved with that one too. Yeah, just just casting. Casting, I mean, uh, we, casting wise, yes. Yeah, yeah, we had the we saw the Al Gang take it over the Cheesemongers United, and a tough playoff run for the Cheesemongers United this year. Really, two series making it to the championship, but. Just not just ha- the wheels fell off the wagon back into a pumpkin it went and just some tough luck but great seasons from those guys yeah so maybe next time they'll they'll get there go all the way that is right so any um, any final messages to our viewers out there from either one of you guys thanks again for both of you guys jumping in and casting for these three matches yeah well. I just want to say thank you to everybody for both turning up to play and turning up to be in the chat. I know uh, usually our streams are a bit smaller, but it was really cool to have so many people here cheering the players on and mm-hmm. watching some good Hearthstone. Uh, you know, casting, we appreciate it a ton, and it was just awesome to see. Maya and Don, anything to add before we let everybody go for the evening? No, just happy, happy to be here. We had some great Hearthstone tonight. A lot of really high-level players uh, just duking it out. Love to see that. And, and uh, you know, congrats again to our Pro Series champions, uh, Brushy Tuna. And uh, good luck to, to AJT and Neji here as they try to face off to determine who's going to be in, in the finals there for Legacy. So a yep. lot of stakes on the line. Uh, good luck to our players. And thanks again for everybody for watching. Yeah, exactly. Uh those of you that watch uh, or tune in to the Twitch channel uh, during the week, I think um, Hearthstone's Hearth Center is going to be uh, on at 9 p.m. Eastern uh, on Tuesday. So if you're up and around for that, uh, Lotus Night or Godus Night, uh, a.k.a., um, we'll be hosting that and filling in some blanks with the, his, his panel. So... We will tune in then. So, but th- thanks again for everybody jumping in and checking out all these matches. Uh, thanks to our, my casters again. We will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Next time, guys. Have a good night. Take care.